three, two, one. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Saturday night here at the Snake Talk Central. What's going on, Jay? What's going on, man? Nice to see you. Yeah, it's good to be here, man. You know, we're we're kind of 50-50 on the fence of whether we're going to even do a podcast. That's right. Tonight. Talked Noah, about it this morning. Yep. yep we're, I'm like, I don't know. Is what Noah is actually leaving town today Yes. for like, I don't know, 10, 12, 13. He doesn't even know. Uh, he flies out to Seattle tonight, and he's meeting up with this friend that he went to school with, and that went into the Coast Guard. Now he's out of the Coast Guard, so he's driving back home to lo- move back home. And uh, so they're just going to take like 10, 12 days and just kind of... They're going to have so much yeah, fun. Yeah, they're going to drive down the coast, go to L.A spend some time i think he's going to be noah's going to be on my buddy ari manis's the comedian's podcast channel he's awesome. hoping that maybe he can get to the comedy store you know probably not going to be able to perform but he'll but at least get to be to there see the know? comedy store maybe ari will have a set at the comedy store which will be really cool so um so anyways my point is that i was like ah, maybe i should you know just go home and and and, and chill and well dr- not chill, you know drive him to the airport oh okay something. okay Lori's driving into the airport but I was going to go with her, but uh, I decided, you know, let's do a podcast. Let's you know do a podcast. I mean? And, uh, and today, this weekend is, of course, Daytona weekend, uh, the big Daytona Reptile Show weekend. Did you hear anything about the show yet? Anything good? Uh, you know, a, a couple bits and pieces. You know, I, I obviously follow a lot of people on Instagram. They're right. there. Savannah's there, by the yes, way. Yes, yes. Um, Sabrina as yeah, well, I saw. Yeah, I saw Sabrina was there. Um, just a whole bunch of people. Jeremy, obviously, we're going to be in about uh, 14 minutes. Ooh. I'm going to be calling my buddy Jeremy, who's at the show. And uh, live, we're going to call him up on the phone, and we're going to talk about what's going on at the Daytona show. So you guys are going to get a little bit of a live update of what the Daytona show was actually like. That's I'm awesome. going to be honest with you. I saw the line, uh, which, you know, because uh, yeah. um, uh, you know, a couple people posted pictures of the line, and... Yo, it looked pretty long. It was burly, it. huh? It I didn't know that. Long. But but when I saw the pictures inside the the place, it looked like there wasn't a lot of people in there. I'm okay. Not, I'm not. Now I heard there were more vendors than last year, and ironically enough, and I'm going to ask Jeremy. I heard Mark Bell is vending today. No way. Which Mark hasn't vended in probably 15 years. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So that's really shocking to me, and I, I'd love to know like if he is vending. Like, does he have one table? Does he have five tables? Does he have a big setup? What has he got there? I heard he had one sided speckle king snakes which what? is pretty cool yeah um something I, I years ago i saw available it's interesting how some animals uh you know come and go yeah you they like disappear mean? into the ether for yeah. a few years right yeah, and sometimes they've gone Decades. forever yeah sometimes oh yeah gone, yeah sometimes people just stop breeding them and then no one breeds them and they're gone you know uh but but the the white-sided speckle king snakes were something that i i saw years ago uh and haven't seen in a long time but mark's always had a pretty eclectic he breeds like obviously stuff that you know uh the pet trade because he supplies pet smart and pet supplies plus and and, and stuff like that what did you find something yeah, these uh, mm. white speckled sides? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yep. Yeah. Yep, there you go. Uh, not those, the white ones. Oh, these ones right here? Yeah, yeah right Okay, there. cool. Yeah, yeah. Wow, those so are So they look cool. kind of like the white-sided Brooks Kings, really. It's almost like a yeah. Brooks King mixed with like those licorice. Yeah. That's like, right? Yeah. It's, well, Similar. well, there's actually white-sized Brooks that look just like Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Same thing, yeah. Cool. Same exact thing. Just a different Very different species. Um, but the Speckle Kings are a little smaller than Brooks Kings. And and really, you know, like Speckle Kings are, are cool. Their whole Brook Eye is what their, their technical is. And, um, it, you know, so you got Brooks Eye and then you got Whole Brook Eye, which is kind of interesting. Interesting, but, yeah. Um, but uh, these guys are f- further north up into the coast of Carolinas and stuff like that is where you find your Speckle Kings. So, um, so anyways, regardless, it's, uh, you know, I heard. I, that's all I heard about Mark Bell being there. I didn't hear anything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and then I, I, I heard there were a lot of monitors there, which I found interesting. Like I can't the wait. lizards or people yeah. watching? No, no, no. Okay. No. Liz- yeah, lizards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, lizards. Uh, Sick. So, uh, but, uh, but we'll talk a little bit about the Daytona show. Obviously, we're going to call Jeremy here in about you know 15 minutes or so, less than 15 minutes. We'll talk to him, get a little bit of a li- live update, but also talk about like my past experiences with Daytona, how how the whole thing started, to be yeah, honest yeah. with you, how the whole thing gone, and, uh, and, and it's good, and you know, obviously. Hit, hit us up in the super chats guys with uh questions as you know saturday nights you guys kind of steer the ship with uh with questions and i know that uh silver cash is in the house already yeah silver cash says super excited about this pizza oven but, brian was yeah, just telling I me literally was just telling uh him i got it in the mail yesterday um and uh it's it looks looks dope man. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't it look looks, cool it, it, it was like really simple i mean it just comes in a box you take it out of the box these legs like fold out 
and you put like a stone in there, like a piece of stone in no there. Way. And uh, and that's it. I mean, that's the end of it. And then you hook it to, so they sell these pizza ovens, obviously, for those you guys don't know, um, uh, Silver Cash is going to come and, and cook some pizza for us. He's a pizza guy. Hell yeah. Uh, and, and, and so he's coming. When is it two weeks from now? Or three uh, weeks from now? Let I'm me check real fast. Sure. I can see But uh, I know him and Mac is also coming into town, so we're super excited about that. And, it, you know, hey, listen, it's a you know, open invite. Everyone can come into town if they want to. But um, but anyways. No, uh, only them. <laughs> only them. <laughs> but uh, so we're going to have a good to good good party time with these guys. I'm super excited about hanging out with them and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, I think you'll like the pizza oven. I was a little worried when I got the box because it's a pretty big box, much heavier than I expected. So I was thinking like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to put this like really thing complicated together. And literally it slides out of the box. You literally fold the feet down and you're done. <laughs> you know, you're literally so done. So cool. So it's, uh, it was really cool. But and I think they'll be here uh, the 10th, September 10th. September 10th. So that's 10th, okay. two and a half weeks. Okay. What, what day is that in the week or is that on the weekend? Let me see. It's like they, I think they're here for a few days, but I think that's the day they get here. Um, Interesting. September 10th is a Friday. Oh, okay. Then it Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Okay. okay. So there you go. All right, cool. That's perfect. On the weekend, you know, be be busy, but it'll be fun, you know, so it's it's good stuff. Um, but so Daytona is obviously was the largest reptile show in the world for a while, wow. right? And how it really started was, uh, and, and it, you have to step back a little bit to, to even go to uh, the, the origins of it. So it started out with uh, Don Hamper, a guy from Columbus, Ohio. They still put the same reptile show on, and they've moved many times. But now Don passed away about a year and a half, two years ago. But his son and, and, and Don's wife still put on the oh, Columbus, awesome. Ohio show. But it started actually, really it started in a guy named Rick Harvey's basement. No way, really? Yeah, literally it was in the basement of this guy's house. And like a couple times a year, people get together and they'd throw a few tables in his basement. And, <laughs> and so, so cool. Don Don was like, well, we should rent a hall, you know, like we should rent a VFW hall. Yeah, yeah. You know? and, and so there was a place called Millersport, Ohio, and Don rented. And that was really the first reptile show in the world was, was this Don Hamper's Millersport, Ohio show. Wow. And um, it was a very small place. I think the thing that I remember so so <laughs> so <laughs> fondly is that there was a vending machine. Don liked his beer, and there was a vending machine that you literally could buy beer out of. Oh no way! Machine. And uh, and they had venomous snakes. They had, I mean, everything. And and uh, it was very very early on in the reptile yeah. world. There wasn't like very much money being made but you know there'd be people like a guy named ed lukasevic had you know tons of colubrids back then and so you know it would just be like deli cups stacked on tables yeah, you know yeah. it was before showcases a little bit more or, rogue yeah, and like all that it, stuff yeah, yeah there was no displays there was no anything i like and, it. Uh, it was like shoe boxes and deli cups that's all you saw in the whole place well well uh wayne hill who puts on the daytona show actually came to the miller's port show to scout it you know, to say like, okay, what's going on here? Because he was thinking about doing a much larger show. And then fast forward uh, later that year, uh, and I was actually at the event. This was the Phoenix Herpetological, or I'm sorry, the Phoenix uh, uh, International Herp Symposium. That was when I met Bob Clark at. That oh, okay, okay. I remember that. And, yeah, yeah. Um, in, in the next year, this, you know, the International Symposium still to this day travels not only around this country, but around the world, international, obviously. And um, in, in the next year, it was going to be in Orlando. And so Wayne was from, you know, the Florida area, and he wanted to put on this reptile show in Orlando. So he went to the International uh, Herb Symposium Committee and basically said, hey, listen, let me do a reptile show in conjunction with the International Herb Symposium. Uh, it would be a great thing because what was happening back then was there was no reptile shows except for right. Millersport, Ohio. But people would bring, just like Bob, would bring their animals into their hotel rooms. And you would just like, okay, you know, you, you walk from, literally you'd walk down the hall to the, the, the hotel, the host hotel room, and there would just be doors open. And, oh no way! And you would just go room to like room a dorm room. party, yeah, or like something. exactly. Yeah. Just go room to room to room, and and there would be people would just have their snakes out on their dressers, and you could buy them, <laughs> you could trade for them, that's so just dope, look at dude. them, whatever the case may be. So low key, yeah. So um, the International Herb Symposium was always a mix up, a, a mashup of like private keepers and zookeepers, you know, right, and, right, and, right, and academics, and so. Um, 
Wayne wanted to do this show. So sure enough, they said, well, let's put it to a vote. There was about 200 people there at the, at the symposium and we put it to vote. and overwhelming. It was like 190 to 10 was like, yes, let's do the reptile show yeah. along with this. And this was the one reason why I haven't been back to an international herb symposium. And that was literally probably like 1991 or something. Oh, wow. Like that, or 90. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It was a long, long time ago. But the reason I haven't been back and I don't have a, like a beef with them or anything like that, but I did, it did leave a really bad taste in my mouth because I was a new guy in the, the industry and stuff like excited that. excited yeah, yeah. and we have this vote everyone's going to do it and literally a couple months later the international herb symposium moved their uh host okay. from orlando to another city because they said they didn't want to be associated with the reptile show wow really yeah after after 190 to 10 vote saying yes let's do it uh the the powers that the salty be, 10 yeah, yeah. The, the people the academics that thought that it was not right to be commercial um pulled the pulled the international herb symposium so anyway wow. so date daytona which of course was orlando back then because the first 10 or 12 years that uh Daytona went on. It was actually in Orlando. It was at a place called the Howard Johnson's Hotel, and uh, and I remember going down there. And and again, I had been to Miller's Port, um, and and no one really knew, you know, what was going to happen. It, like there was already like that genesis. Like obviously, the year before the albino Burmese thing was happening, because I met Bob Clark with all that type right. of stuff. And um, and 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 you know, no one really knew what was going to really come down the pike. No, but things and, were heating uh, up. For but sure. yeah, things yeah. were definitely heating up. And and so we go down to to Orlando to do this this show this first time show, and it goes from a little VFW hall to a giant you know pretty darn good conference room right, yeah. and it is packed with tables and over you could not move the amount packed of like people. sardines right I mean like sardines it was absolutely incredible and that's really was the the, the what really really kicked off the reptile hobby was because it was the first time that you could go and. And, and, and there was tons of money being changing hands and people were actually going from like going to Miller's part where you might make a couple hundred dollars and do a couple trades. All of a sudden people are making thousands and thousands of dollars, which yeah. just never had happened before in the whole history of reptiles, you know? And, and, and of course that was in the Howard Johnson. Ironically enough, right across the parking lot was a hotel that's still there. I think it's called the Double Tree now, but it was the Twin Towers Hotel. Right, right. And, um, and, and, and every time we pass it, you, Brian's always I like, said, there, yeah, it there, there it is. There's the Twin Towers. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And, I love uh, that because it's always on right off International Drive. If you're if you're going into Florida uh, to Orlando and you see it all, every time you drive down there. So, um, so so the next year it moved to the Twin Towers, which had a much larger convention center and then a whole bunch of little rooms as well. And every year there'd be more rooms. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There'd be like the giant center, then the second second hall, then there'd be 15 different rooms, and and uh, and then ultimately it moved to Daytona after probably 10 or 12 years but i always loved orlando we'll talk more about that in a minute let's hit a couple more supers and then like i said in about two minutes we'll let's, let's, yeah let's hit one or two supers and then we're going to call jeremy at uh 5 15. sure we got a real deal says corn I snake that we had one above that that no. was a uh, silver cash oh that was oh so yeah, yeah. Uh, okay okay i saw it. i thought I I, thank you for checking yeah, up I, yeah, yeah. uh real deal says corn snake steps to breeding incubation temps and humidity i fully understand br uh, ball python breeding but not corns don't yeah. they need to hibernate so brew mating is helpful. You know, it, you can breed corn snakes without brew mating, but it does absolutely help to brew mate. Kind of uh, jump starts snakes. them a little. Yeah, it does jump start them. And then, um, uh, uh, you know, basically, you know, you want to cool them down into the 50s, maybe lower 60s at, at, at no no warmer than that because then you start burning calories. You bring them out, you bring them up to about 78 to 80 degrees, hot spot about 84, 85 degrees. Uh, you breed them. Uh, they go through a pre-lay shed. They go through a post-hibernation shed. That's yep. the ovulation shed or the follicle shed. Then they go through a pre-lay shed. Then they lay their eggs. Incubations, you know, 84 degrees, 60 days. Uh, pretty simple s stuff, you know, so, but feel free to reach out if you have any other questions. Uh, and, and because it's so close, let's go ahead. Well, uh, I, I can bring through yeah, a couple let's, more. Let's, let's just hit one more. Yeah. Yeah. 666 says, uh, Hey Brian, I just had my first ball Python clutch. One, awesome. uh, one normal came out very deformed. Mm. Uh, it's egg was at the bottom of the clutch and became flattened through incubation. Could this cause deformities? Yeah, it certainly can. You know, a couple things can cause deformities on, on that egg. Number one, coming out a little bit messed up because it's deflated can have that. But more importantly, what might have happened 
on a deformity standpoint is if it's at the very bottom, it could have been on a heat spot. And when that animal is a zygote and gets overheated, you can cause kinking and deformities yep. and stuff like that. So, so that's certainly a possibility, you know, hopefully the rest of the clutch came out good and, and congratulations on, on your first clutch of eggs. Let's, uh, let's, you let's stop in? it. Let's stop it there. Okay, cool. I'll have and these let's all just saved, go ahead. So. Yeah. You guys, you guys hang tight with and me. Keep here. throwing super chats and, too. Cause uh, I'll, I'll, if there's any for, for Jeremy too, I can actually, he said, give me five so we can Perfect. go, uh, we can go can our, our boy, Ryan, also from Orlando said uh, um, that things were pretty cool down in Daytona. Too. Oh, so, dope. So, yeah, let's hit a couple more and then we'll jump on with Jeremy. He's just said, give him five minutes. So, sure. uh, so that's not a problem. Uh, Shalina says, uh, just want to give love for the next project. I love your building vlogs. Just love all of yeah. you, including JT. Thank, well, you. thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. We uh, not man, but <laughs> well, man. <laughs> hey, um, it's, it's it's gender neutral at yeah, this yeah, point. Exactly. You know? um, but uh, yeah, we got, you know, building projects are going to be fun. We got, you know, once this starts, yeah, there's going to be a lot know, of building. Yeah. And Tuesday we go to the, the the city for the first meeting. Uh, awesome. Well, the first official meeting. We've kind of talked with them. We've thrown some things by, but we're gonna us our architects, our plans, everything. Sit down at you know across the table from uh, the planning and inspector on Good. Tuesday. So that's going to be a pretty massive day because we're going to either get a yeah we're going to make this work or we're going to get ah we got some problems and we're going to have to try to figure this out if it's yeah. going to work. I'm, I'm expecting it to be like, hey, we'll figure this out and we're going to make this work I somehow. Um, but you I never I, know. You don't know. You don't know. I mean, uh, you know, the city has been very, very supportive of us through everything that we've done. Uh, I'd be very surprised if they didn't. But they also probably have some rules that they have to adhere to right. that may or may not be bendable. Uh, and, 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 and we have something that's called a non-conforming building. Uh, it's been here for many years. Longer so, than so, the codes. Yeah, have been so, here, yeah right? so since the codes have this would be what they would call a non-conforming building so we're not changing the non-conforming building we're just adding to it right yeah, yeah. and so we're you know theoretically if we we're trying to build the building that we're building now from scratch we wouldn't be allowed to yeah you know so that's that that raises a few little questions but i think in in most cities we we'd have some issues. I'll be totally honest with you. I think in the city that we're in right now, I think we're actually in pretty good shape. I but, agree. Uh, uh, but we'll see how it goes. So Tuesday is a big day. I will certainly keep you guys posted. Uh, Roberta says, so glad you decided to do the podcast. Uh, Saw you comment about maybe not yeah, doing it and yeah. much love to you and Jay. Yeah, thank you, Roberta. And yeah, we were just not sure. Like I said, because Noah was leaving and I m thought I might want to go go with him to the airport. I did end up going this afternoon. I had a little break. I, I went and spent a little time with him. Good. You know, listen, he's an adult. He's yeah, 21 yeah, yeah, years yeah, yeah. old. He's not like a, a 12 year old, but uh, but he's still, we love him. You know what I mean? We love Shaboy. him. And, 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 and you know, he, he it's going to be, it's just like when he moves out, it's going to be really tough for me. I mean, I love, me, me, me and Lois spend a lot of time at night after Lori goes to bed. We watch scary movies sometimes together, other movies. We watch watch series together uh i mean we spend a lot of time together and it's going to be you know as much as i love Lori, and i certainly do uh you know it's going to be hard when <laughs> noah leaves and, i know and even him being gone for the next you know 12 12 days or whatever is going to be it's like a dude where's weird. my boy yeah not to mention he's involved in everything that happens here you know yeah. he does you know thumbnails for me he works on reels and, and and insta stories and stuff like that with me so um it's just be you know different without him being around for the next little bit but that being said he's going on an amazing trip yeah. that i think he'll remember much like that you know 18 year old trip that i went on out to phoenix right. for the international herb symposium that's a trip i'll remember the rest of my life because i was a kid it was my first kind of independent trip noah has went out with some trips with us recently yeah obviously. but we're all together but, but we're together you know, you know this, this is, is him like and his a, boy him and his his friend and so this is the first time that that he's done this and it's going to be they have no agenda they don't know where they're staying each night they have no idea so the only sad. thing he knows is he's going to go to la for two or three days and he's going to be with ari for a, a day or two and uh and yeah other than that so so yes but i yeah we decided let's do the podcast so so we did. And speaking so, of which, Max said, love this podcast and Heidi rules. Uh, she certainly so does. Thank you so much. Well, I am going to go ahead and call Jeremy right Jeremy. now. Let's see if this works. This is the first time we've done this. Yeah. That sounds Ooh, good. Does that sound okay? Yep. I'll turn it down a little bit. Yeah, it bit. sounds a little loud. What's up, man? Hey, Jeremy, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Good, good, good. Welcome to the podcast. I appreciate you uh, taking the time, man. So, uh, hey, so, absolutely. So, yeah. So where, where are you at right now? Right now, I'm at, I'm at the hotel. I'm at the Hilton across the street. Ah, oh, got it. Got it. At the Hilton. No, that's the host hotel, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. How? So tell me, uh, what was your first impression of the, sh of the show? Uh, it wasn't all ball python, so I was excited. <laughs> wow, that is interesting. You know, you know I, I know, I, was it you that told me that Mark Bell was there? 
Yeah, he was he was on the vendor list. I haven't seen him though. Oh, you haven't seen him, so he's on the vendor list, but you didn't see his booth. Yeah. Interesting. That's interesting. Someone else told me that he had a white-sided speckle king, so he must be there, I think, because someone told me that they saw something on his table. But, you know, he might just have, like, one table. I don't know. You know what I mean? I, yeah. That's interesting. If, if they're here, they're definitely low-key because I, I probably walked past it a thousand times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I heard that it sounded like there was a pretty good vendor list, that, that like, maybe more vendors than last year. Do you think that's true? I, I do. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, definitely. So I've seen it full with more vendors you know, many, many years ago, yeah. but, uh, you know, coming, coming out of the COVID crazy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty well packed of vendors. Okay, cool. How, how about the, the crowd? I had mentioned, I had saw on Instagram that it looked like the line getting in was pretty long, but when I saw the pictures of the hall itself, like literally midday, it, it didn't look like there was a lot of people there to be honest with you. Yeah, I've definitely seen it more packed. Um, and from, from what I've gathered from talking with other vendors and stuff, it sounded like last year's Daytona, oddly enough, in the midst of the pandemic, yeah. uh, was a lot stronger attendance-wise, and, and sales seemed to be really great. Um, this year, sales seem to be decent, but there's there's not as many people as there were last year. At least yeah. it doesn't seem... Yeah. And that's, that's what I, I mean, I, I, you're the first person I've talked to. I mean, I've just been messaging a little bit with people and stuff like that. Um, yeah. so that's, that's kind of the, the gist. And I think what happened was last year, you know, Daytona was the first kind of thing that anyone could do, you know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. like all summer, everyone's locked in and all of a sudden it's like, Oh, we can go to a reptile show. So, so it seemed like yeah. it was that way. And, and Florida being the free, you know, spirit <laughs> that they, they are, uh, I think it was kind oh, of a yeah. nice break, you know, How, and speaking of that, not to get too much into the Corona side, but I saw you guys Ooh. had mass on a lot, but, uh, how, how a lot of mass, not, not mass. What do we got down there? Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, when we first, when I first got in Friday, uh, they wanted everybody wearing masks. Wow. Uh, but, but most of the vendors were like, the hell with that, man. We're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, you know. I mean, it's Florida. You can't catch COVID down here, remember? Right. No, it's so. it's not available. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, no, I mean, it, definitely the uh, the patrons, there's been a lot, a lot of masks being worn okay. by attendees. Okay. Um, and it seems like for the most part, most of the vendors were wearing masks during the day just to keep, you know, keep everybody happy. Gotcha. Uh, you know, and not stir too much, too much nonsense and drama. But I mean, you know, like I said, I'm at the hotel now. I'm like, dude, I see like two masks and 300 people. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. That's uh, <laughs> and that, that sounds like it. So, so tell me some of the highlights of the show. I mean, what what kind of animals did we have here? Um, I was really surprised to see uh, Eurydactylus geckos. Wow. Uh, yeah, definitely a rare species of, of little gecko uh, yeah. that you don't see too often. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of blood pythons. Really? I saw your Insta story with some pretty banging blood. Wh whose table was that that you did the story on? I think just the, the quick little run of like the different bloods in Borneo. That was uh, that was Stephen Tillis. Oh, okay. um, and he was showing off the uh, the mocha tea positive albino Borneo this okay. year. Gotcha. Uh, which was pretty cool. But then I was talking to I was talking with Rob because I'm down here with Rob. Yeah. And uh, and we we're like, man, you know, it, it's crazy that. You know, we're we're looking at golden eye blood pythons are now like a deli cup blood python. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, is there it's, any magpie dude, stuff there yet, or just golden eye stuff? There's, there's been a couple. I've seen a couple magpies out on tables. I've seen a lot of batiks and batik combos. Okay. Um, and what's a ma what's a magpie going for these days? I was seeing them, dude, around three thousand oh, dollars. Okay, well, that's getting to more affordable for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Compared to however many years ago at 10 grand plus, like yeah. one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I still, I, I definitely will own some of those at, at some point because they are one of my favorite. We'll punch them up here in a second. Uh, as a matter of yeah. fact, Jay, you can punch it up now. Magpie blood python. Yeah, you got it, you got it. Uh, so Jeremy, he's just going to punch it up on the screen so people can see what a yeah. magpie blood python looks like. But uh, definitely look like some banging uh, blood pythons down there. And yeah, look at those beautiful. Man, those things are beautiful. So, They're insane, right, man? I mean, that, that was the first blood python I ever saw. It was a picture from, of course, Dave and Tracy Barker. Sure. And uh, and I was like, oh, my God, i got to have one of these, dude. Yeah. They're so amazing. Yeah. And then I saw that price tag and was like, one day. <laughs> one day. Well, now they're going to – that's how it always works. You either buy it high or you wait till it comes down, you can buy it low. So, uh, exactly. so, so it's coming down. Um, lots of monitors I heard there. So what kind of monitor lizards did they have? Yeah, definitely a lot of monitors. Seen some Asian water monitors, um, some Cinulosa, which was pretty oh, cool. Oh, interesting. 
um, some Argus, some captive bred Argus monitors, which yeah. are pretty sweet. They're sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then uh, amazingly, there's a croc monitor here. I wasn't expecting to see a croc monitor. Was it a baby uh, or was it a bigger one? It was like a juvenile. I'd say oh, at least okay. three or four feet. Oh, okay. Uh, Not that bad. Yeah, so I mean, there, there was a, some pretty decent diversity. I've seen, I've seen a couple of roughnecks, black roughnecks. Okay. Um, and a couple of white throats. Oh, okay, gotcha. Now, do you think, uh, you know, I know that show is supposed to be all captive bred, but do you think that those mm-hmm. were captive bred animals or potentially long term imports? I think I think a lot of them were long term term imports. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, especially the crocs. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. no nobody's breeding those right now. And right. and the the couple people that do have eggs on the ground, you know, those babies just recently hatched or yeah. are, you know are still really small. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, that's for sure. Now, um, uh, any any rare pythons? Like, I mean, besides ball pythons and blood pythons. Um. Not really. Nothing okay. that, that caught my attention is like, oh, my God. There's been uh, okay. some pretty interesting um, Woma pythons. Wow. Um, just like what, really that... high contrasted, really? reduced pattern Womas. Wow. Uh, yeah, those those kind of caught my eye. Um, there's uh, some bromeliad boas. Oh, my gosh. Sheesh, yeah. oh, Pete's. I haven't seen those in, in forever. I mean, those are little. Yeah, little, Those are hard to work with. Those are not easy oh, animals absolutely. to work with. So, wow, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, those those were pretty sweet, but not nothing too much Python wise that was like, whoa, like yeah. I didn't expect to see that at all. You know, yeah, like no, if I, there's no Owen Pellies, that's for yeah, sure. No Owen Pellies, yeah, no <laughs> Owen Pellies pythons. Uh, no Biz, Bismarcks or D'Alberts or anything like that. Um, I did see a, one Southern white lip. No Bismarcks, man. Uh, I expected to see a couple Bismarcks. Uh, yeah, and that's those would have been yeah. coming home with me. Yeah, that's the one place <laughs> that seems like Bismarcks are. I'm, I want to get a pair of Bismarcks be, be so bad because I used to breed them a long time ago and I haven't bred them. I haven't even had them for years and years and years. So, uh, yeah, you yeah. can put up Bismarck ring pythons. It, they are absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So uh, that's oh, yeah. awesome. So you guys are, you and Rob are down there for the weekend then? Yeah, we're we're leaving. I'm leaving a little before him tomorrow because okay. um, I'm I'm going back up with my buddies from North Carolina okay. to finalize some stuff for my move. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's coming up quick, huh? Yeah, it's coming up quick, man. It's like a week and a half. Oh my gosh, that quick! Holy cow! Yeah, that yeah, that's, quick, man. <laughs> that's wild. Yeah. So, any yeah. Uh, any updates on the North Carolina law? I mean, I know that they said that they like kind of were going to move it into some the next stage, but have you heard anything else about that? Yeah, so I haven't had the chance to really talk with Phil um, since I've been out here, but I'm, I'm certainly going to a little bit later at the auction. Um, but from what I've been able to gather, uh, the, the city council decided to move it to a committee, uh, like a natural resources committee or something yeah, like that. Right. And, uh, and then they'll, they'll reconvene from there. So nothing's been, nothing's been passed. It, it moved to the next step, but there's still nothing that's been passed. The biggest concern is the definition of terms. Right. So the term wild and exotic animals is, is still such a broad terminology right. that sure. at any point in time they can be like, nope, we think that, you know, yeah, that that ball yeah. python is wild and exotic. So exactly. you can't keep, you know, yeah. they could do anything like that. So yeah. that's kind of the thing where we're like, OK, we, we need to really understand the definition of that term, and yeah. both for the keeper standpoint, but also for the lawmaker standpoint, yeah. if it does go through. Right. Exactly. You know, that needs to be clarified. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's what's going on. That's, that's the Raleigh stuff as yeah, far Raleigh, as North yeah. Carolina. Like no, nothing necessarily huge is coming out of the statewide stuff because right. it's just too late to throw, put something into session. Right, yeah. So uh, we're going to probably reconvene the next session for that. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Yeah. But that's awesome. Well, well, listen, dude, thank you so much for calling, giving us an update on the Daytona show. Have a great time there. To sell, tell everyone I said hi that uh, doesn't hate me. And uh, <laughs> 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 and uh, and uh, I'll 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 be sure to catch up with you soon. Good luck with the move. Hit me up when you get a chance. All right. All right. Thanks, man. I appreciate all right. it. All right. See you, brother. Take care, all man. Right. Bye. Bye. Right. So that was obviously Jeremy. He just giving us a little bit of an update Love on that. the Daytona show. It was great, man. You know, kind of. It, it was cool. Know, yeah. yeah. And it's cool that we it's the first time we've we literally done a phone like we've call. we've never really thought about it. There's like a, a Bluetooth thing on here. So we today we yes. were like, I wonder if we can make a call on yeah, it, and we maybe, figured it out. Maybe later on we'll just like. Go down my list and just call some random, yeah, random person. Idiots. I have some crazy people in my phone. <laughs> Trust me, I've got 
You know, David, <laughs> I've got David Dobrik's number. Oh, I've this got, is called a brick I've boy. I've got Alicia Violets. I've Ooh. got, uh, I've got, uh, got a lot of, co- I've got, uh, yeah, I've got, got Logan I mean, Paul. Got we can call Logan, Logan Paul. I got Jake. Let's Paul. just see I've who got, answers, you know, I've got Ross Smith. I've got, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. I've got Carrie King's number in here from Slayer. I've got, oh, that would be I mean, cool. I, we can, but I'm not going to call the celebrities. <laughs> not yet. Phone. Not, not yet. that. Not maybe yet. next time. Maybe next time. But maybe we will call somebody on my, my phone list here later on in the podcast. But, uh, let's hit a couple more super and then we'll keep on moving on with uh, everything else. Man. Dude, absolutely. We got uh, uh, Shalina, uh, Shalina came back and said, thanks for saying my name, right? It uh, always gets strange. Well, I'm glad I yeah, nailed same that. Same thing. You know, listen, I had this this uh, this uh, <laughs> tour in yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and it was so funny because it was, it was a, a family... Was it the in one the, that I met, the one that was here in the morning, right? I think so. Not my tour. Not, oh, okay, not, okay, this okay. This was actually uh, uh, a just another tour that I was hanging out with. Gotcha. But, but it was so funny because the boy was, I would say, four, five the most. Right. And he kept on saying... Hey Brian Barcheck. Hey Brian Bar and and he was saying it perfectly. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. said, I said, I said, you say my name better than almost anybody. anybody. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Because because he wouldn't. I mean, literally, no less than a hundred times did he say, "Hey Brian Barcheck." Oh, I love. Oh, hey that. Brian Barcheck, can you show me this? You Brian know Barcheck, he watches you, you all this? day, dude. And uh, I, I, it was so cute. You know, it's a great family, actually, local family that uh, uh, does usually does. I think this is like their third annual tour with us. Oh, I love that. So too. since That's the beginning, awesome. they come, they come in sometimes during open hours yeah. too, but every year they do kind of a tour just before school starts so uh so it was great what, to good see great them. way to end the summer you know? yeah it's kind of their kind of thing a staycation is i think as they call yeah, it. yeah 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 uh cody says hey brian my pine snakes are really tame however they can get spooked sometimes by yeah. unknown reasons and start biting everything wow uh, i would like to someday share them with people because they are great any suggestions to help well, you know, you've got, I think that, that you, you kind of nailed it when you said that they spook, you know, I mean, when, when snakes really, you, you've got to remember snakes, you know, really gets, get bitey or aggressive or defensive, whatever you want to call it for two reasons, either they're hungry or they're scared. Right. And so, uh, chance are, this doesn't sound like a hunger issue. Uh, although some pituophis are pretty yep. monsters when it comes to feeding. Uh, but in this case, it sounds more like they, yeah, they're scared about something. So, so what you have to do is somehow try to uh, expose them to whatever they're afraid of to get them not afraid of it, yeah. you know? So, so, uh, it's one of the things we'll do here, you know, with like snakes, maybe we'll touch their head a bunch or monitors. We'll touch their face, you know, stuff like that. Try to de- you know, desensitize Stuff that makes them, them almost like, uh, makes them flinch, but then make them realize like, Hey, it's not. Yeah. And then the more you do it, of. the less they'll flinch exactly. and eventually you can get it. So I think that is probably an exposure therapy situation, you know, kind of find out what they, why they, d- they're afraid and then try to go the other way and, and, and make them not afraid of it, you know, and that's that's all you can really do. And, you know, not every snake is going to get past it, you know. Right. I mean, there are some snakes that just aren't going to be good handling yeah, snakes. Not nature um, for it. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, pitch wolf is usually are pretty good. Pine snakes are usually pretty good. So I would assume you'll be okay with it. I think that you will get past it. But at the same time, uh, you know, it, 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 maybe you might have an individual, individuals that won't. But uh, but I think that if you do the exposure therapy, you'll get there. Uh, RC Exotic says, much love, guys. Nice Thanks. to see you again. Yeah, RC. it's been a while since we've seen. Yeah, hope all yeah, is well. I hope all is well, man. Uh, an America made more. Uh, retracted. It's retracted. Yeah. So if so, you yeah. wanted to send a message, just uh, hit us up in the comments, you know, you know, and uh, we'll uh, get back to you. OK, yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what I got for now. Bro. I got okay, cool. Yeah. So back to Orlando. Um, so, you know, like I said, the first very Orlando was really interesting because, again, it was in a smaller place. Ironically enough, probably when when my friend Peter Birch from Australia, we did a couple tours uh, like where um, they would bring people from Australia and we would like tour around Florida. They'd come to my facility, stuff like that. And then we, we even did a couple where we took people from here to Australia, uh, like, you know, 15 people or stuff like that. And those were really fun. I mean, I've always thought I should do them again, to be yeah. totally honest with you. It's hard to find the time. And, and it is difficult. I'm not going to lie. Like, like when you when we went to Australia, it was like, it was a great time, but I was babysitting 15 people, right? Like, so my job was to make 15 people have a great time. Not so much make Brian Barczyk have a great yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Every time you're a host of something, yeah, you're yeah. having the worst time yeah, of everyone yeah. there. Yeah, and, and I didn't have a terrible time. I had a great time every time we did it, but but it was not as good of a time if I went, went on my own. No, but it's we, more stress. We, yeah, we literally did, the tours would be like, um, uh, we would start in in uh, Darwin, 
uh, North, Northern Territory, and we would do like Crocosaurus Cove, yeah. uh, hang out in Darwin, go herping, go out to Nurlanji Rock, which is a rock escarpment, you know, about three hours away. We'd go to Fog Dam, go herping, stuff like that. So we spent two or three days there. Then we would fly down to Queensland, spend some time, uh, you know, go to the Australia Zoo uh, in Bararu. We went, uh, and then we'd go, and this was obviously the highlight for everyone all the time, is we'd go to Bob Irwin, Steve Irwin's dad's house for a lunch. People and, tripping, uh, And right? we'd spend the whole day with Bob when he would tool us around his, his camp chili, uh, show us all the cool things that he was excited about and, and just get to spend some chinwag time with, uh, with a legend like Bob. And, um, I like and, that and, chinwag yeah, time. Chin, that's, like a, that's, that. an, that's a good that's one. That's an Australian, uh, a slang. I threw that <laughs> I like in there. that, dude. Yeah. They call it chinwagon when you, when you're over there, uh, just good. chatting her up. Uh, and then we'd ultimately end up in, 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 uh, 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 New South Wales doing, right. you know, Taronga Zoo, the reptile park in Gosford, um, and, and so it was a lot of fun, but but my point is is that one of the times that we brought a group here, they actually stayed at the Howard Johnson's, the same hotel that the original one oh, that's uh, cool. started, and, and and it was it's cool that it's still there. And uh, of course, the Twin Towers are no longer the Twin Towers. Like I said, I think they're the Double Tree, but but that hotel is still there too. I haven't been in it since since uh, the reptile show. And but it was really an interesting time then because like. Uh, it was something you look forward to every year. So in a way, me, you know, like every time Daytona comes around, I have that little bit of twinge of like sorrow that I'm not there. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like I'm like, the oh nostalgia. man, I wish, I wish I could. Because I really, you know, for many years, I think at the very end, it became a little bit of a chore where it'd be almost like, oh shit, Daytona's next. Yeah, week. yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. We yeah. got to pack, we got to drive. It's so stressful. It's like, but and even though you would have a lot of fun when you were there, and it was one of the more fun shows we did every year, um, because it's really great. I mean, the hotel where Jeremy's at the Hilton, literally, your room is overlooking the beach. You know, I mean, and it's also a, Florida just got that fun vibe. You know, it's got yeah, safari vibe. Yeah, dude. it was totally cool, but but it was it was a lot of work. Right. You know, and, and I think the first, you know, we did it for twenty something years as a matter of fact when we stopped doing daytona we were the only live animal vendor that had done every single show since the start like there had been not one live animal vendor wow. had done all 20 something shows you know yeah. in, in 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 concession you know uh and that's why like i mentioned mark bell mark bell was one of the originals but he stopped doing it years before i stopped doing right. it and uh and so it, it was a tough decision to stop but those last couple of years um you know i was already kind of starting to figure out how to transition away from that part of my life into the and, reptarium uh, into, stuff, yeah right? into the reptarium esque you know whatever the case is you know social media all that other stuff and um and, and so it was a little bit of a bear but it still was a lot of fun and i think the also the other thing is the last couple of years that i was there was like when the real vitriol started in the ball python world it makes it where, harder to go where, right yeah where people you know you would go and there'd be like this group hated this group and this group people hated this stink group and this yeah. you know and yeah. I, like i said i told the story of the the last uh daytona show i ever did the guy next to me was a ball python guy and um and he had uh, uh i believe it was a, a mimosa which was a ghost champagne and they were like fifteen thousand dollars and there was only one other guy that had a mimosa and, and this one guy kept going back between them deciding who he was going to buy it from and the guy next to me started to say you know he told a story about this other vendor i'm leaving everyone's names out obviously and he said well you don't want to buy from that guy he he beats his girlfriend up you oh know? my god! And it was a complete lie. I mean, complete. Oh, and it wasn't even lie. true. No, it was a hundred percent a lie. Wow, this guy was that's a, fucked up. The other guy was a good friend of mine. Still is a good friend of mine and a sweetheart. Would never touch anybody. And that that just kind of. I think at that point I was like, all right, I'm over. I, this is done. I, I yeah. don't need this anymore. Now, like I said, things have gotten much better in the reptile hobby since, and and there's more kumbaya and stuff like that, which is awesome. And I kind of do miss the shows, and and there's that nostalgic part. Like, Hell man, yeah. I'd love to go back down to Florida. There was always your favorite restaurant you had to go eat every time you went down there and you know we always did a, a series of like repetition every time we went there there was like go, golf carts that, that yeah, me and yeah. my, my friend from germany would come in and we'd always go do the golf carts and or, or not go carts not golf carts go carts you know it's racing and it's like even though you're was, working yeah. it's like it's a vacation in the sense of like it's a place you're going every year that you're going to do similar stuff and that you enjoy with your friends yeah. you know even though you're yeah. going to be working your ass off too yeah but it was it was so much fun you know but but i think orlando even though i love daytona I still think Orlando was when it was the best. Like that was when it was like, and maybe it was because it was really, that was when the industry exploded, right? Yeah, so yeah. every year you would go, and, and I thought it was the best layout too, because again, 
the host hotel is across the street from the Daytona show. It's not in the same building. And not everyone stays at the host hotel because there's so many other hotels in there. Right. Whereas in Orlando, everyone stayed at the Twin Towers. The entire Twin Towers was nothing but reptile people. Which is wild. Much, much like Tinley Park is with the NBR. And that's why I think Tinley is so special. Yeah. It's because it's the hotel, it's the convention center. Everything's in one. There's a bar, there's a restaurant, there's everything all in one. And everyone can just hang out and never leave the place. Yeah, like and, happens like if you go to the bathroom, you're probably going to be peeing next to another dude that yeah. likes reptiles. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, That's I mean, cool. Me, That's fun. Trust me. There's Yeah, I mean, I remember a couple times we thought I felt terrible at Tinley because there would be like a, a wedding couple there, you know, like had just got married. And I thought, oh, man, did you pick the wrong weekend to, <laughs> yeah, be, yeah, yeah, to yeah. have a fucking wedding reception? Snakes in here, every you know? room. You know, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's like you are two people of the entire hotel that isn't reptiles. <laughs> people it was like but, when um, we went to uh north carolina and we were the only not kids in the hotel yeah yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> it was yeah, like yeah. that right yeah exactly you know so but orlando was was really really amazing and i'll tell some stories about that but let's hit a couple of supers and you then i'll it. tell some stories about orlando uh real deal came back to say i love picking your brain maybe one day i'll be able to meet you by the way i've binged all the snake talk podcasts since i drive trucks for a living well hey Thanks. thank you so much and you're always welcome to to pick my brain i mean there's a lot of boogers in there so <laughs> pick, pick, <laughs> pick them away <laughs> pick those boogers out man uh attica <laughs> says hey can you explain the bci and constrictor constrictor yep. all the acronyms yep. confuse me and i want to yep. make sure i get the right info yeah i mean it's pretty simple really basically what you have is is uh bci is boa constrictor and parotter that's the colombian boa the common boa the majority of boas you see mutation wise and non-mutation wise are common Colombian boas, which are BCI, mm -hmm. right? Boa constrictor imperata. Yeah, if it's at a pet shop, probably a BCI. Most, most likely. likely. Constrictor constrictor are the true red tails, right? So really, I don't know that there's any... Morphs. Right? Morphs in constrictor constrictor at is. all. So those would be like your Suriname, your uh, Guianas, your your uh, uh, Peruvian red tail boas, stuff like that. You know, those are constrictor constrictor, right? So uh, just just that's as simple as that. They're what they would call the true red tail boas, not common boas. Because the truth is, is that the BCIs, which are the constrictor imperators, are not really true red tail boas. And yeah, you can see some of these pictures. Just, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna so that's a Colombian. Up. That's a Colombian, a BCI. Yep. Uh, which and then we're going to go to a... Uh... Oh yeah, you what saw you the business. Like yeah, just yeah, any any. I think there was actually even some pictures on that last. Oh, one. was there? Okay, yeah, I'm going to so. get two up so that they can see beside the side yeah, kind of yeah. what it looks there like. There you go. So yeah. these are like these are like the true red go. tail boas here. These are the so this is your BCCs true, yeah. or the you know constrictor constrictors you know and you can see the difference with the red and this more brown tan stuff like that so Sharp a lot of times you'll see like the head pattern is much more cryptic you know they have mm -hmm. a lot of times they they have more of the widow peaks even though constrictor constrictor or constrictor imperator can have that but uh but mainly it's that that long tail but there are short tail like Bolivians, punch these up. Bolivian oh, yeah. red, uh, red tail boas or Bolivian uh, short tail boas actually. They're not even red tail boa either. Um, they're they're uh, yeah. You can even just punch that. I'm sure that that'll come up. It's, it's I got you, bro. Yeah, no worries. But uh, these are the, the oh no way yeah, yeah, with these, the little cute yeah, tail, they have the teeny tiny tails. That's cute. And so these are the Bolivians, and they typically, as a matter of fact, if you come over to your left, the second picture down. The, this second, one right here. Se, no, over to the left. Okay. Uh, yeah, there we go. Gotcha. That's the more typical Bolivian where they have these really weird widow peaks, you know, with these really weird Almost saddles. Like, yeah, yeah, jumbled um, up, and right? That, that's the typical, you know, one. You also see, like, if you go down and down one, yeah, and then all the way to your right. This one? That's another op. You know, that's like, cool. Really reduced pattern I Bolivians. Like uh, and then, you know, so, so that, that sums up, you know, basically the difference between BCI and BCC. Yes, I agree. Uh, our buddy, Mike the Jeweler. Mikey. He says, I uh, hope everyone's doing well today. I have one ball python who's always angry. Yeah. Tried all sorts to habituate. No luck. Some mm -hmm. of them are just grumpy critters. Yeah, that's the truth. I mean, that's that's the just truth. Like humans. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, there are... I always say that here at the Reptarium, we take good-tempered animals and turn them into amazing-tempered animals. Now, we sometimes, on rare occasion, have been able to take grumpy animals and turn them into great animals. But most of the time, we want a good animal to turn it into a great animal, not a bad animal to turn it into a great animal. Because yeah. the transition from bad to great is difficult. Very. The transition from good to great is easy. The transition from bad to good is all right too, but uh, but bad is definitely definitely much more difficult to handle when it comes to to that type of stuff. Trust me. Uh, Zachary says show price for a tiger and super tiger retic. 
question mark. I have no idea. I, I don't. No I, I don't. I don't. So there's two things that people may not know about me. Number one, I know have no idea what price on anything is because I don't sell snakes. Um, uh, Lori and the crew sell snakes. I don't. Ha- yep. I don't know what anything costs at all. I mean, I sometimes have a general idea, but most of the time, even when I'm trying to buy something, I have to Google it because I'm like, I don't know what it's even going for. And like someone say, Hey, I've got this available. And I'm like, Okay, I don't know. I don't follow the financial side of of reptiles at all. And then of course, retics, I don't do at all. So, so like sales, I buy retics, you know, like yeah, when I'm yeah, buying, yeah. buying something for the reptarian, but I, I could, I mean, I mean, I have no idea. I seriously, it don't. would just be a shot in the dark. Yeah. If I mean, guessed, I, yeah, if I even guessed, I could be off hundreds of dollars. I mean, I don't even have any idea. So, uh, sorry, but, but very easy to find out. Just go to Morph Market. I mean, there's, there's yeah, Morph that's Market. The best you've way. got, you've got every retic you can imagine. You're going to pretty much there. see the general, like what mm-hmm. the market's willing to pay for it, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, JT, JTA Reptiles says, hey, Brian, I was wondering if you were uh, excluded from the snake discovery build off. I refuse to watch until I know they uh, excluded you. Love you. Well, I wasn't invited. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so <laughs> I wasn't invited. And I was told that uh, uh, at one I was told that uh, a couple participants felt that uh, 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 that having any involvement with me, with me was bad for their reputation. So you, that you can take it with what you want. Do what you want, yeah. you know, you can do what you want. Yeah. I, I was, I wasn't there cause I didn't, I didn't want to go. I was there cause I was not asked. Timothy says, how's the Boega divergence doing? Just saw yeah. Dan yeah. from DN exotics. Got an exanthic oh, yeah. divergence. Whoa, that sounds cool. You'll have oh. to check it out. Hope the rest, does that mean that you're going to have like white and blue? No yellow no, and blue? I don't know if it'd be yellow. I think it'd be more like silver and black, actually. I really? Think is what I think it would be. Uh, oh, that's Dan so has cool. some stuff. I love Dan. You know, Dan from DMM's Exotics. I, I'm a big fan of his. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've only talked a couple times, uh, and it's been years. So, I mean, we've really had no major uh, Contact. relationship uh, either way. But I love his I love his content. I love his attitude. I love... Uh, uh, I just think he's an interesting, you know, I mean, he's got an interesting style with his video that's yeah. almost like matter of facty, like, you know, but I like it, man. I like everything about it. And he always, you know, obviously he moved to Thailand. I was enthralled with this move to Thailand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I was watching his video with, he was quarantined in a hotel room. Oh, this room. is that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was cool, like cool. watching his videos. I mean, just literally he's in a hotel room for 15 days and I was watching. What a like, good story. Like, I was like, wow, this is amazing, you know, and, and he's a big bodybuilder dude. So it's like, you know, I'm thinking like, how's this guy going to, you know, survive 15 days without a gym? And, and, uh, you know, it's interesting, but, but on the same side, it's snake wise. He's got a lot of great snakes. He's always had great snakes. And, um, and, and so, yeah, that's awesome, man. Good. And I know he just came back from Thailand and he's back in California cool. for, he said for about three months, I think he had some reptile shipments. Obviously this one came in with it and, um, and, and, and that he was wrapping some things like, like selling his car and stuff like that. And then he was going to go back to Thailand in a few months. I also heard that. Uh, you know what he his la- la- latest video that I watched from him, he said Thailand was like really bad COVID. I was gonna say so like now he's gonna have to like, go through that quarantine process he when he goes to go back through the quarantine Ooh, process when he goes back again. But he also, like I said, it just sounded to me like like things that really you know like were yeah, really bad and that yeah. that you know when when you know a lot of people I know moved like I, I had a friend uh, that moved from uh, Vancouver, Canada to to indonesia because they were sick of the canadian restrictions yeah. and then they moved to indonesia and it's, it's worse it's like way worse now you know it's like way worse in indonesia you have to remember was like canada was probably going to get better quicker yeah. than, than yeah. indonesia yeah. Or, or thailand because obviously they just don't have the resources to get the vaccine out there and all that other stuff so they're going to struggle longer so uh you can't run away from this thing no you we know? just all got to deal and, with and it. it wasn't dan wasn't running away i wasn't saying that he was moving there because his his wife was thai yeah and yeah. uh and he had I, I remember 15 years ago, he was a firefighter. And I remember 15 years ago, him telling me that he, he was going to retire and move to, to, to Thailand. Oh, that's cool. so, so this was always in the plan. As a matter of fact, I have a feeling that it got postponed because of COVID, not because, you know, but at the same time, I'm sure he was thinking, hey, it'd be great to get out of California and go to <laughs> Thailand. And then it sounds like Thailand kind of fell apart a little bit. But uh, but he's 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 still living there. He's just back. So, gotcha, But, gotcha. but I, I love his stuff. If you guys don't watch it, I, I suggest you do because he's really cool. Uh, Lizard AL says, uh, I'm guessing it's Lizard Al, but hey, Brian, I've been watching you since Leopard Gecko Madness videos on <laughs> oh Snake God. Bites TV. Are there Shit, any yeah. Leopard Gecko projects you're excited about? It's interesting. We just shot some leopard geckos today yep. for the first time in quite some time. We haven't really spent much some time with leopard geckos. You know, it's interesting. Um, 
I'm not going to lie to you. I, I love leopard geckos. Yeah. And, and, and Jesco does a great job with je- leopard geckos. But like, I kind of just turned that project over to, to Jessica. Yeah, it's so autonomous. I don't with even her, yeah. know what she's doing anymore. You're like, I mean, like, like I don't. I don't <laughs> no, even ask so her. Oh, it's so true. You know? And I, I know like, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't ask her. I don't, I mean, I, I, I look through the racks occasionally to see cool shit. And <laughs> most of the time, I don't even know what it is. I'm like, wow, that looks Isn't cool. Isn't that nice to know? have somebody like that, though, yeah. that you can just trust? Like, hey, go do you. Yeah, I know you, you know, got the best interest in yeah, mind. Yeah. I mean, I, I could, you know, I think Jessica is, is, is one of those people that like, you know, I talk about the, the transition for BHB, you know, being something different and, and, you know, and I don't even know where she, Jessica fits into, to, you know, the reptarium slash BHB. Like, I don't, you know, she, she will get whatever she wants. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. like if she would be like, Hey Brian, I'd just rather work at the reptarium and, and not be a part of B, you know, that's fine too. But if she wants to continue with BHB, cause the one thing about Jessica, she's great at working. She's great at animals. But she doesn't really like being around people much. Yeah, so yeah. so I don't, you know, that's why she doesn't work the Reptarium that much anymore. She does work Friday nights typically, but uh, she used to work every time. And and so I think she might actually be like, I'd rather just work with animals. And not yeah, like just hang out in the rack of and, uh, room and stuff. Yeah. And, and I could see her being a much bigger part at, at BHB um, as, as we transition into something different. Yeah, Silver Cash says you're gonna love this oven, and since it's gas, gonna be super easy to clean. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, and it's funny because I mean, on the box it shows people like cooking steaks and and like other oh, stuff. No way, like, really? Like veggies and and uh, you know, the only thing I didn't get, uh, uh, Silver Cash, is I didn't get and, and let me know if I need to get one and how I get one. I guess I could order one. Online. I didn't get one of those like pizza things, like the big old like you the know, wooden like, paddle you, thing, like the paddle thing. Oh uh-huh, you know, like, yeah, yeah. I think you could even get like stainless steel paddle ones, like you know, yeah, just you to can switch it around. But I didn't get one of those. Obviously, now I regret that I didn't because it was an <laughs> option when I, I it was on there. I was like, I'm not going to get it. It was like people and who bought like, also yeah. bought. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I should have probably bought that because how are you going to switch the pizza around, especially when you're in a thousand degree oven, you know? So Just use your fingers. So, uh, so let me know what you think, yeah, man. Silver Cash, what I should do about that, uh, where I should get one. Or I, I mean, maybe there's something local I can buy. I'm sure there is. Buy it online, but I want to get it before you get here for sure. Uh, Becky says, Neo is so awesome. What an amazing looking snake. He's going to be gorgeous, full grown. Are these people? here watching us film i, I, I actually, feel like we i feel like everyone's saying yeah, what we've been filming yeah like we filmed it well ironically enough i did do some stories on leopard geckos today okay and okay, I know okay becky uh did respond to my my uh, insta story with neo okay now it's making a little so, more yeah. sense Mr. and Brian. by the way neo is a girl i call her neo because it's really neapolitan yeah uh and, and i just call it short for neo but i know neo is should mainly a boy it, name it's but it's not a, girl. a boy's it's name. a girl okay. she is a girl you know so <laughs> she is she is pretty spectacular though uh and nice to see you becky yeah thank you becky uh let roses burn whoa whoa there it is. whoa slow says down. uh ordered supplies for my crusties from josh's frogs can't yeah. wait to set up yeah. my first true bioactive that's awesome yeah it, i know it, it's gonna be great with yeah, your... josh's frogs a great great company as well you know really good people we're friends with them they're not far away from us no uh, as a matter of fact i think that they're supposed to do like a uh a, a crew building like whatever day and come here they're wait supposed, what yeah they're supposed to like have like this kind like josh's frog is gonna josh's come here? frogs is coming here oh, with that's like sick. Not, i don't think all his crew because i think he has like a hundred and something employees. there's a lot i think just like his like maybe his office help or yeah, something yeah, yeah. like maybe that. the main stuff uh, yeah, yeah his main people they're gonna come for a little uh you know just you know that's actually really cool yeah, I can't wait so to go back there too. I love that place. It's, it's such a, place. a it's weird a wild, labyrinth. I think, they yeah. have, I think they have a new place now too. Like I think they still have the old place, but I think they bought a new place. Now oh, really? Too. So okay. That's what I heard. So I, I haven't seen them. Which, by the way, my fucking elbow hurts really bad. Oh, really? I wonder that, why. Yeah, if you guys don't, you know, of course you wouldn't know it. Is there too a big bump? Oh yeah, it hurts, man. Dude, you so I, yeah, I, I like uh, I was cleaning Ivy and Ar- Ariana's cage today, and I stepped out of the cage with bare feet and just bit it hard. Like, and, boof. <laughs> I'm really pretty lucky. You yeah, know, I'm very not, lucky. I'm not like dude. really a young. I'm not as young as I used to be. So when you're young, you can bounce around. And I, I'm a fall like that at, at even at my age. Yeah. I mean, that can cost you your career. I'm yeah, not even fucking with you. I'm, I'm a, it's strange how durable I always am. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I do a lot of stuff that is like really beats me up. And that was like, I'm talking like, you know, Fred Flintstone slip out both fall feet on in ice, the air, you know, pretty much. Boom, yeah. right <laughs> yeah, on my, yeah. right on my backside back. But I, my elbow took the worst of it. And just sitting at this table, it's like right where the elbow comes in. <laughs> Speaking of this table, the guys that made the table yeah. are coming. I think it might even be as soon as next week. Next week or the following week yeah, um, really yeah they're coming and they're they're bringing uh i think they're bringing a couple special things for us Ooh, so. i like special so things got, yeah so we're gonna have some new stuff oh maybe it's a wand they had they did they the do the wands which are really wand. cool yeah it's really cool um 
Let's do this one more, and then we'll get to some more super chats here in, in a few. Thank you guys for continuing. Yeah, they're crushing it right keep now. Keep crushing, keep crushing. I'll get to all your super chats today. I promise. I'm going to get this one with little bogus, and then uh, we well, will uh, we'll talk a little bit more about Daytona, Orlando, and, and then, then we'll, we'll get back. back to super chats. So keep them, keep them coming, guys. A uh, little bogus says you're making my day so much better. How's the baby snake with the eye issue doing? Yeah. Sorry if you already answered this. Just getting no. back to the podcast. No, 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 no. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, didn't answer that one. It's actually doing really good. So it, it literally looks like it might be blind in that eye but it didn't lose the eye and it looks strangely much more normal than i expected right right i mean i thought it was going to look really bad and it actually doesn't look bad to be totally honest with you so uh yeah no i think it, it's it's pretty cool should we hit a couple more or should Dude, just like, we i'm got, down for let's it. hit a couple more just because we got a bunch and, and i don't want to get you guys to i don't want to have to make you guys wait john said chats. uh have you stayed in touch with chandler tyler and will their family yeah bro? absolutely man you know, sir, we, we I, I, I correspond with them frequently. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so there's uh, there are they're great. Will's like uh, just Will and Summer. Are just How like, did that happen? Because we've only yeah. met them one other time than everyone yeah, else. But like, they feel yeah. like family. Yeah, they're like family. They really are. And, and, and Chandler and I have been chatting a lot lately. Yeah. Uh, he's a really cool dude. I like him a tremendous amount. And, um, and, and, and Tyler you know, as well. And, yeah. and, and Tyler is great, too. We chat more. Tyler's busy, though. He's got a lot going on. Uh, so it's I don't think he has as much time to chit-chat as, as some of the other guys do. Uh, Greg's Reptile Studio says, Hey, fam, are you guys heading east at all? Bri, I'm glad mm -hmm. I got my message about Riverside Reptiles Edu Center. Also, first, BOD, MTG. Hmm. I don't know what that means. For know. reptile rescue scheduled. Hmm. Oh, Maybe something meeting. meeting. BOD meeting. For a reptile um, rescue scheduled. Yeah. Well, I'm well, sounds like all good stuff. Yeah, it sounds like you're <laughs> heading in great. the right direction. And yeah, we're going to be... crushing it. We, we've got to head east. There's, there's, let's see, there's three trips that I have to make literally probably within the next month. Yep. Um, one is to New York. Which is a little bit up in the air, but 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 I I want to make that trip right happen. right right. It's a little bit that one is a little up in the air. Um, and then uh uh, Myrtle Beach yeah. because our, our you know friend the real Mowgli um he's leaving, he's leaving right? Myrtle Beach Wildlife Safari uh and and we want to go before he leaves to 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 come because because I've like you know loosely corresponded with with those guys over there, but don't have any really good connections so i'd like to go and 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 sure that up a little bit more yeah, too yeah. and plus you know i like you know he's a good dude anyways and i want to see him before i get so so Mer myrtle beach and then lastly is utah, utah. You know, back, to, back to utah so um so, so no, yes hopefully yeah so yeah <laughs> so yeah hopefully new york hopefully myrtle beach and hopefully utah uh, by the end of September. Uh, James says, will you be doing any shows in Florida, Repticon possibly? No. Your show has truly inspired me with snakes and reptiles. Well, James, thank you so much. I, I actually don't do reptile shows at all anymore. So haven't, I think the last reptile show that I've done. Beginning I of did your was, vlog, that's right. Did, I don't, yeah, I was vlogging when I did reptile shows. Hold on, shows. let me rephrase that. I don't know if you were vending when you vlogged. I know, I know I you were? did. Okay, because I remember just seeing you do stuff at a show. I know that I did because didn't I vlog when I had the the uh, parasite? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I was I that and I I did Tinley. I was at Tinley when I got Bella. As a matter of yes, fact, the yes, last you're the, right, you're the, right. as a matter of fact, the last show I did was when I got Bella. Yep, that was the and very last that. show I did. So it was probably four years ago. Four years ago, coming up on five years this October. It'll be five years this October that I I, I since I stopped doing shows. Uh, Ryan, our boy from Florida. Ryan, what's up, dude? He said, what up, gang? Just showing some love down here from the Daytona show, having a killer time. Scored a smoking Dracula line gargoyle from wow. Tiki's. Chilled with tons of cool people like Savannah, Danny, and Chandler, and having an awesome night. Good. Dude, let's, I'm let's glad Let's call Ryan. Do you want to call Ryan? Do it, bro. All right, let's call Ryan. Ba -da -da. Let's call Ryan right now. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, let's see here. pick up your phone, Ryan. We're going to see if he uh, if he picks up. He'll pick up. He's going to poop. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is great. <laughs> I do love it. We're going to do this all the time. We're going to be calling people constantly. We should just Hello? do it. Hey, Ryan, what's going on, man? I'm on the podcast, and you are too. How are you, What man? up, Ryan? Hey, what's going on, brother? What up, Jay? Brian, what's going on? What's, what's going, going on, man? How was, uh, how was the Daytona show, man? Oh, man, it was pretty sweet, dude. I mean, the show out was, was incredible. I mean, the uh, line was wrapped around the building. Yeah. I mean, hundreds and hundreds, you know, an hour and a half before the show. So it was wow. it was pretty killer. That's yeah, awesome. I chilled with my girl, Savannah, Danny, yeah. Chandler, Dave Kaufman. I mean, it was, 
it was a good time. A lot, of, awesome. a lot of awesome animals and that's and uh, it was good. So stuff. what was that? What, kicking with y'all. It's going good. What was the highlight of the show as far as animal wise goes? I mean, like what was the the like uh, the, the like holy shit? I know you're a gecko guy, but, oh, but you man. know like what, what else was Don't there? Don't do me like that. <laughs> yeah, do like that. we're doing you like that. Um, there was tons of monitors, man. I mean. Right. People had stuff from from Kevin there, even though that Kevin wasn't there. But they had okay. some of his black dragons were gorgeous, okay. and um, I picked up, like I said, I picked up a killer six stripe guard from Tiki's. You know, nice. that was cool for me. What else did Tiki? What else know. did Tiki's have? Because I love those guys. You know, they have a lot of good stuff. Yeah, man, he had some killer killer crusties, some Leos, some little snakes, and um, all sorts of other stuff. But uh, okay. yeah, they're doing great. I introduced Savannah to them, and and. Uh, Wow, it's a good time, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I didn't was, know that Savannah. I cool. figured Savannah would have known them. Was there? Um, I know Florida. Yeah. yeah. Did you? Are, did you tell me that you saw Mark Bell there or no? Who was it now? A Mark Bell. I'm just. I'm, I'm, I'm Mark <laughs> Where Bell. the hell's Mark no, Bell? Right. I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find Mark <laughs> Bell. there, but I just probably didn't see him. You know, and yeah. have my glasses on because I'm after fogging me up. It you know? happens. Yeah, yeah, that's okay, but that's yeah. good. You you there for tomorrow too? Oh yeah, man, we're here tonight. I'm about to hit up the auction at seven. All uh, right, yeah, the, uh, go go support yeah. USR. Go do that, man. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, man. man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Support that, support that army, man. So, all right, brother, we just wanted to call and get the update, man. So you have a good night. Nah, Enjoy yourself. You tell, guys. Yeah, yeah, tell too, man. Tell everyone I said hi. Later, man. brother. See you, dude. Hey, we'll do. You have a good night. Dude, I think we got to do a, a podcast where we like wait on hold for like T-Mobile customer service or something. Oh my this gosh, great, yeah, right, dude. yeah. We should we should call like we you know what we should do. <laughs> let us know in, <laughs> let us know in the in the chat if you guys want. We should call like random reptile shops oh. and just like ask them questions that we would and get. see if like let's quiz them. Maybe we call like PetSmart. And oh like, yeah, I got a ball yeah. python won't eat. I wonder what PetSmart's advice. That's would actually be, a good idea. It, you know, for a ball python that won't. We eat. should save that for a video. That's yeah, feel, so that maybe seems like a good video. Yeah. Let me know if you guys want. We, now we got a new toy to play with. I realize <laughs> it's better to have visual, but you know, this is this is fun. That hey, I, maybe we'll I FaceTime and you can just yeah. hold it up a, 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 you know, in front should, of your shoulder. This is what I should do. I should just go to my contacts and uh, and just like what? scroll. Do you know what I'm confused about though, Brian? How come we couldn't just like use the computer to bluetooth and then zoom somebody in you probably could <laughs> we went through all this could. shit for nothing shit, i got casey neistat's number in here wait do you really yeah, let's really fucking do. call him up you call Ch- yeah, i got chad he ain't Brown. got nothing got, going on got chandler's i got uh let's see i got chandler's uh, there chase the boa guy that we met right down in texas a good dude man uh gosh i got so many numbers <laughs> chris from garden state Cordis. i didn't even realize i had his number chris gillette i've got in here Got so many stuff, man. I got, uh, wow. Let's call yeah. Scales and Tails. Oh, <laughs> and figure well, out how everything's been going. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's good. interesting. Yeah, it's a, yeah, I guess, did you see that uh, Chris Gillette and, and uh, you were Gabby, telling me. Yeah, they did an interview. I didn't get a chance to watch it. I definitely want to watch that. They did an interview with the, the keeper that got her hand crunched. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I, I've got to watch that because I'm really interested in. To know in, what the heck's yeah, to going to know what happened with that. So, but yeah, cool. Our girl, Let Roses Burn, says, yeah. how about changing Aries to Athena or did I just miss the new name? Yeah, so we're calling her Ariana. Yeah. Um, but Athena, I, Athena was one that, you know. A lot of people Ar- yeah, Athena, Artemis was one. I, I had my old husky was named Artemis, so it was a little tough for me. Um, some people wanted us to keep it Aries, which is a male goddess. So it, it didn't seem very, very, you know apropos to have that um but uh but yeah you know i think we're gonna go with ariana yeah i think it fits nice i think it's it a does. pretty name it does. Too. it's a good name uh timothy says the uh oh cool he said the axanthic divergence are very silver uh and black much more impressive than the axanthic dendrophila yeah the, you know as a matter of fact i almost just bought a pair of axanthic our friend Lindsay. yeah 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 uh reached out and there was a pair of axanthic uh, uh dendrophila dendrophila and um, the, but they were sold as soon as he reached out to me, and I was like, "See how how much they are? I'd like to buy them." They're the ones that are black they, with white. Yeah, right? black with white. They're really yeah. pretty. I like them. They're too. pretty. They're not like crazy, but no. they're pretty. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but unfortunately, they were already sold. It's so like one of those things. You're like, missed, can we start stretching them. these white stripes out a little bit? You get yeah, like a crazy. You know, it's yeah. But I, I definitely would think that the aneurysmic uh, uh, oh, yeah. divergence would be much more. Impressive. How does Lindsay yeah. get all these mangroves, man? I, I think she's friends with like the scales and tails people. Oh, you're right. You're right. People you're that right. are like several. She's like you know she loves that stuff. Yeah. She's, she's like really into it. So she's. And, and she just, you know, 
probably has more time than I do to be divulging and trying to find stuff. Right. So, right. but what's great is she ends up sending me, you know, she's great and I love her to death. Yeah. And, she's awesome. She, uh, she sends me all kinds of stuff, to all do. kinds of goodies. Okay, hey, guess what I got here. You know? Yeah. I love so, that. Uh, so I love it. You know, uh, silver cash says, yeah, you need to get a, wait, you need to get a peel to rotate pizzas. Is that what they're called? Peels? Uh, peel. I like that. Peel okay. the pizza up, uh, right. and put them in and I'm also going to bring pans to for you, and it's an awesome oven. Cook a steak and everything. There so we go. need a peel. We need a peel, like Keenan Peel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I'll get a peel. You know, that's like a, uh, 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 what, what the heck? Uh, the, the sauna thing is called like a dipper cup or dipper, dipper something. No, it's not. Like what, the, 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 the wooden sun, spoon? Yeah, the wooden spoon is called like a dipper sip or something like that. <laughs> I like that. It's like that. something really strange. It's like, because when I was reading the, you know, on my sauna, there's instructions like, like. Yeah, uh, use weird. the dipper yeah, sip. like you put two dipper sips worth of water <laughs> or whatever it is. I'm like, what? Or, I think it might be dipper cup. But uh, I think it's Dipper Cup, but it's no way, that, really. Yeah, it's just really a weird thing, yeah. Uh, so, so we need a peel. Yes, exactly. Dustin says, "Hey Brian, just got a sand boa. Was nice. told he is nine years old, Ooh. but he weighs thirty grams. Yeah. Is this normal for sand boas? I yeah. have ball pythons, but yeah. this is my first sand boa. Yeah, I would say for a male, probably thirty to fifty grams is pretty typical. To be totally honest with you, even even one that's that age." Um, they are sexually dimorphic, so males stay much, much smaller than females. Um, so, yeah, I think you're you're probably about right. You know, I mean, I've had male Samboas literally eat three times a year. You know, that's how, how few times wow. I've had them eat. Really? And, and be like eight, nine years old and still only eat three, maybe four meals a year. Wow. So so they're they're definitely a different different species. There's no doubt about that. And I think you're right. I think they're called dippers. I just looked it up. Ladle, it, ladles and dippers. Uh, it's called. just dippers. So, so it's a, a so dipper of water. Dipper, yeah, dipper cup. Then I guess when they say a cup, like yeah, a, yeah. a dipper cup full or something like that. Love that. But, uh, but that's a weird one. Uh, Dustin said, hey, oh, I already read yours, Dustin. Dustin nice try. Don't try to get nice in there try. twice. Uh, Silver Cash said trolling other pet shops. <laughs> LOL. One day, dude, we'll do it. Yeah, yeah. That'd be dude. funny, it man. It would be a funny thing to just have like a list of like... Uh, uh, things I, I'll try to think before we get off here to, to like who else I can call tonight. I'll call somebody. <laughs> we'll get somebody on the line. Uh, Gretel's message yeah, was messages. retracted. Hopefully, uh, if you had something, yeah, I can let find us know, it. Gretel. And uh, maybe my mods could point me in the right direction. Yes. So, uh, Family Bites says, I miss the beginning and never uh, get to see you live as I'm in Australia. Hope this is okay to ask. Why haven't you had a collab with Snake Discovery? <laughs> Love you both. I think the person to ask is her, not me. Yes, I uh, agree. And we'll just leave it at that. And uh, Solus Honky said, hi, everyone. Love and 420 from the great Northwest. Solus Honky. You got to meet up with Noah. On? As a matter of fact, you know, you're, uh, I'm going to take a look here a second here. Yeah, look yeah. Through my stuff. Take a look so um, uh, you're Australian. The Australia, yeah. Australia. Australia, mate. Um, of course, uh, Kyle Chambers is a, is a uh, Olympic swimmer. Uh, that won a couple medals in in the recent uh, Olympics, Olympics? Okay. and uh, so for you Australians, uh, he, <laughs> me, and him are becoming friends on on uh, the the old Instagram, and so I reached out to him after he won his silver medal because they did a little story on him saying that he likes snakes, and literally I just messaged him like, "Hey, bro, you know, congratulations on the medal. You know, I know you Come like snakes," the and then he literally like he like he was like, "Bro, I've been watching you for twelve years, no. man. This is very crazy," and so since we just kind of going back, and he's now back in australia for a little he, he actually he said he, he he mainly presides in europe training so uh he's gonna maybe come over later this year Please, uh to dude. come visit us and it'd be great to have an olympic uh gold medalist yeah, medalist uh it's hang a good out with wondering. Us. yeah i mean it'd be super cool and he's you know he's keeps a bunch of i mean his reptile room was dope was man. it sick I fact, bet. let's can you punch this up i don't know if it'll come try. up so kyle chambers swimmer reptile room kyle chambers swimmer Reptile room. I have no idea if it'll come up or not, but it might. Let's see if there's any. So this it? is Kyle. Nice. Uh, yep, there he is, right there, right there, right. Is this see, him yep, right here? That's it. Oh wow, cool. So he's got a bunch of really cool stuff, man. He's got like a whole reptile room, man. Look oh, at look this, at dude. those he's got black-headed pythons there. Look at that. Like he's got all kinds of stuff. Look at. I mean, this is dope, right? Look at he's got bearded dragon on his head and the two little skinks. Yeah, he's got a little skink. How Australian is that photo, right there, mate? Yeah. 
fucking bloody cunt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, louder. <laughs> <laughs> bloody oath, mate. <laughs> yeah, bloody oath. Bloody we were just, oath. what was it? What, what was it? Chin flapping? What was it? Chin, chin, wagging. chin wagging. We was just chin wagging with just chin bl- this bloody cunt over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Nah, dude. I love He seems like a really cool dude, man. Like I said, we chat a little bit on Instagram. So so there you go, Australia. Uh, Lil Bogus says, my number is 402 416. Just kidding. Ah. Oh, we almost, you almost had us bogus. Oh, my gosh. I was about to call you on the air and <laughs> yeah. give it to you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Silver Cash said, going to have to make dough the day before uh, or three hours to prove. Super excited. We already know this. Yeah, we know. Come on, dude. We're gonna what? This, so this is the oh, idea. Pizza, silver cash. This is the idea. You're gonna be coming in. We're gonna probably, uh, we'll either go to my house and proof the dough or make the dough to proof, uh, and then come back, hang out with the Reptarian. But at some point, Friday night, you, me, and Mac's gonna be in town, right? Yes, yes. So Mac, we'll we'll go back to my house before the Reptarium closes because we don't want to wait too late, and we'll go just chill out there. I, bring your swim shorts, not because I have a swimming pool, but you're gonna do the hot. They're gonna do the sauna the and the cold tub. You're gonna <laughs> yeah. do the cold tub, so you're gonna have to spend. You better you hit know, them with them sixteen scoops like you did us in the winter. Yeah, yeah, brother. yeah. The the, dip, the dippers. <laughs> yeah, sixteen I, dippers. Zipper dippers. <laughs> yeah, um, dippers. But uh, yeah, we'll do the sauna. We'll do a little cold tub. We'll chill out by our pond. Our aqua escape pond with the koi Ooh, and uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be making uh yeah we'll be making some uh some pizzas out there you know <laughs> on the big old patio so yeah we're gonna have a great time man yeah it'll be a blast yep everyone's That's... invited Come everybody everybody in the chat you're invited uh oh by the way gretel's uh our lovely mods got us gretel's question all good said hi brian when are you getting another red-eyed pied retic don't let the name wait what is it Bunacula? Was it Bunacula? Go to waste? It's a vampire bunny for the win. I don't know what what is Bunacula. It must be it's a vampire bunny. Like Dracula? It's a vampire bunny. Let's look at Oh Bunny Cula. Okay. Hold on. Bunny Cula. This is crazy. Bunicula. Bunicula. Oh, dude, it looks ah, just like it, dude. It does, actually. It looks just <laughs> like it. <laughs> it is a good one. That's Holy cr- That's shit. impressive, honestly. Good wow. job on that one, Greg. Where is this from, man? This is amazing. Bunicula. Yeah. Author. Bunicula. <laughs> this is insane, dude. That literally looks like it. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's identical. We do need it. All right, that's it. We'll get another oh, one. Oh, man. Name it Bunicula. Yeah, is it Bunicula? You think? That, sounds, that sounds better, right? Bunicula ben- sounds yeah, a little. Bun- Bunicula? Yeah, Dracula, Bunicula, Bunicula, Bunicula. Yeah, that sounds, I think that that sounds yeah, better. Bunicula. Much better. Yeah, Bunicula. We figured yeah, it out Bunicula. together. Yeah, Bunicula. <laughs> um, that would be good. That'd be good. I lo- that's dope. I know. I love I that. Mean, that's I, I, I should change it from Neo to Bunicula. <sighs> we'll just, yeah, we'll have two Bunicula. names. Bunicula. Yeah, Bunicula. Uh, Tanya says, "Hi, Brian. I bought my first snake." Uh, she was from a pet store where she had been eating a small mouse every mm-hmm. five days. Mm-hmm. I bought her. Uh, August fifth, and she hasn't eaten for me. What do I do? Oh gosh, you know, bring uh, it back, Tanya. It's it's a tough one because let me. Hmm. So give us a call. Yes, that's because the number this is one. this is this is. I, I'm not trying to chastise you. Please don't take it this way. This is the problem with your thing. I bought my first snake. No clue what snake it is. Uh, she was from a pet store where she had been eating a small mouse for every five days. Don't know what snake it is. Don't know how old it is. Uh, I know how when you bought her, and I don't know anything else. Yeah, I we don't need know, to know the, cage. So I need to know cage. I need to know species. Temps, I need to know humidity. temps, humidities. So my point is, is rather than doing super chat, because uh, I don't want you to have to do that again, uh, just give us a call. Give us a call. We'll be happy to help you through. I'll take good but, care but, of yeah, you. Yeah, we just need, you know, like I... You know, if it's a corn snake or if it's a ball python, two really radically different things, or if it's a boa constrictor or whatever the case may be. So um, so just give us a call at bhbreptiles.com. You can see the number. I don't know what the hell it is off the top of my head. It's like yeah, yeah. 586 something 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 um, uh, So we'll help you out. Don't worry about it. Uh, Will says, and I agree with this. Uh, let me make sure I got his because it's not in here. Okay. We need a, to be honest with you, T-shirt. <laughs> and he said, he, I just drove uh, past the reptarium an hour ago. Whoa. And I think we need it where it says, to be honest with you, and then on the back it says, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, to be yeah. honest with you, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, that's actually good. I'm, to be honest that's with you, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. Yeah, that, and I do say that a yeah, lot. Yeah, those are your two catches. Because, yeah, because I don't, I don't want to lie to you. And I'm going to be honest <laughs> And I'm with honest you as a mofo right now. Yeah, I'm honest about it. You oh, know? thank you, T- Tiffany, for dropping the BHB reptiles. 
yeah, uh, yeah, in yeah, the comments. Yeah, just give us a call. Whenever you have a snake issue, I mean, we, we help everybody. You don't have to have bought it from us for us to help you, you know? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I would say probably nine out of 10 phone calls we have are not our snake that has the problem. Right. It's someone else's is issue. So. And that's what I got on Supers right now, right, Mr. Cool. Brown. Well, yep. If you guys have more Supers, hit me up. We're happy to answer this. In the meantime, we'll go back to, to Orlando. And, uh, and again, Orlando, to paint the picture... Uh, hotel room twin towers means there's two towers of hotel rooms but then down the hallway there's a, a big convention center and then a littler room and then a series of small rooms that slowly filled up over the years now ultimately why uh, Wayne moved from Orlando to Daytona was simply because of size um, they just you know he ran out of room and and you know he just kept adding more tables I mean <laughs> you know tables and tables and tables and tables and and it, I felt bad because some of these auxiliary rooms were really garbage right like most people didn't even know they were there you know so we were always lucky we had we were because we were from the day one we had our table in the main hall the big hall which had the majority of the traffic right and the second hall wasn't bad either because it was attached right by a hallway and you you know you had you know if you were walking by you could see there were more tables down there but then there were all these auxiliary rooms that you didn't even know existed you'd have to go look for them literally and then when he originally uh moved to daytona i think that they realized they were building a convention center but at first, it was actually just like an auditorium that like maybe bands, like smaller bands would play in right, right. or like basketball games or something on that line. So so there was like the main floor that was a pretty decent size, which we always were at. But then he did the same thing, like up, you'd have to go like up the stairs and there'd be like auxiliary rooms. <laughs> and there were even tables that he set up in the like because this had stadium seating and like the 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 like aisleways there were tables no in the way. aisleways yeah, yeah. where people and so that was a bummer there but that only went on for maybe like four or five years before they uh, expanded into the the convention center which right. is a giant convention center and, and that unfortunately that was when the kind of show was already starting to die a little bit and uh, not that it died. I'm just saying that it started to like lose its luster. You know, Europe started doing its own shows because you got to remember back then in Orlando and early Daytona, all the Europeans would come right. to these shows because there it's were no European people, shows. Yeah. All the Japanese would come uh, to the shows and they would be huge buyers because they, you know, prices were exponentially higher over there at that point so they would come and spend big big money um and and they were huge for us you know that 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 it, but then the european like ham show started uh the the, the shows in england like lanchester and and um and, and various shows in europe and then of course the the, the shishiku show in, in japan started and uh and and it became less them coming here and slowly the shows weren't as is big in daytona right. so so then he had this giant center in daytona that they're at now that is kind of half empty almost yeah like the aisles are giant you know and you go to tinley or you go to the super show or or any of the other shows the aisles are decent you know enough to get through but they're kind of whatever but then you've got this like gigantic you know like you know i mean literally the aisleways in, in daytona are like 20 feet across wow. and, and just because he has so much room Room, you know um but like i said i heard that, like jeremy said there's more vendors this year than there were last year which is really good and uh, it's still a really good show but orlando was cool because again hotel the lobby was like the place to hang for a lot of people uh me like th there was a bar that was like right outside the door th the pool was there yeah and then a, in the pool cabana area there was a bar it were with like live music and stuff like that too. So all the people that drank hung out at the bar and some in the back, you know, of the thing. And then, then the rest of people like me that didn't really drink and party much, we hung out in the hot, the lobby and the lobby was packed. I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people were packed and you would see all Unreal. the big name guys, you know, all the guys that were like, legends in the reptile business at the time they would all just be hanging out, you know, and everyone's just trying to walking around chit chatting, you know, chin wagging with everybody. And it was, uh, it, that was like, uh, to me, that was the best time of the reptile hobby, to be honest with you, because it was so booming. It's kind of like when the stock market is exploding, you know, you, they say you could throw a dart at a board and, and triple your money. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. kind of how the, that time of the, the reptile business was, right? Like you could just basically almost do anything and it was going to work, you know, it was going to be yeah. absolutely amazing. Um, but unfortunately, um, you know, that moved to Daytona and it never really had the same feel. I love Daytona. I had a a good time the eight or ten years i did daytona um but it, yep. it, it never had the same 
uh, feel that Orlando had. And and by then, again, you know, the the, the Tinley show started. That really kind of was taking over as kind of like the show to go to. Right, right, um, right. So, so like Daytona never really had the same luster that it had, you know, and it, it, I think it kind of more turned into, to be honest with you, and this isn't degradating the Daytona show at all because it's still a really great show to go to. It turned into more of a Florida show, to be honest with you. Yes, people do travel in and yes, people do, but I'd say like 90% of the attendees are from Florida and, oh, okay, and 90% okay. of the, the, the vendors are from Florida. Um, I thought you meant like wooden posts and chicken wire. You know what I'm no, saying? no, 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 yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. It was, it was no, just that. And the other thing was, is quite frankly, the FWC, which is the, the Florida, uh, uh, yeah, the, their Wildlife Commission. They uh, 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 actually, I think it's like Florida Water, it, Wild, oh, or really? something like that. But uh, um, they they really started making it very difficult for vendors out of state. So you had, you were required permits to vend if you weren't out of state oh, okay. and they were like really like not only permits, but they would like, you would have to have an inventory list of everything you brought and then you would have to turn in an inventory list of everything you sold. And if you sold it to someone in Florida, you had to have like their information. It became like, like they, the FWC was doing everything they could do to kill that show to be totally honest right, with right, you. Right. And they did because most people from out of state, myself included said, this just isn't worth it anymore. Worth the squeeze, yeah. It's not worth me going through all this. And it wasn't just like, hey, you have to do this paperwork and you're good. It's like, you have to do this paperwork and we're going to come to the show and we're going to come to your booth and we're going to interrogate you at your booth every single year. Yep. And uh, and they didn't just, just do it to me. They did it to every single person to the point where I know a couple people they took to jail because they didn't have the permits. Wow. They literally took them to jail. Yeah, so uh, that. so So that kind of killed the show too, you know. So it wasn't necessarily Wayne's fault or, or anything. I think that the the FWC just really crushed that show a lot and, and, and it became more of a local show. And then, of course, there were other opportunities at the Super Show out in, in Pomona or San Diego and, of course, uh, then Arlington with the NARBC and, of course, Tinley Park and all that stuff. You know, there was just better shows that you didn't have to deal with all the hassle. And so, obviously, that's where people move to right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, Silver Cash said, appreciate y'all and have an awesome night. Yeah, you too, man. I, I appreciate you. Look forward to seeing you here soon. Oh, RC Exotics came back and says, do you have to cool carpets, uh, cool down carpet pythons yep. before breeding? Uh, also, do you know when the breeding season starts? Much love, guys. Yeah. By the way, I'm doing well. Good. I'm glad you're doing well. Um, I think uh, the, the best time to start is about October-ish. You know, usually uh, mid-October is when I start. I don't really cool, to be honest with you. A lot of people do cool just slightly, I mean, a little drop of four or five degrees, something like that. I don't cool at all, but I do food cycle a little bit. So mm -hmm. I increase their food a little bit about mid-October, um, and then I start putting them together. And and, and listen, I've been breeding carpets uh, uh, mostly since I was 18 years old. I told the story before that, you know, back when I was in my early 20s, we were producing 500-plus carpet pythons a year, probably I mean, the, the next guy down was probably producing 50 carpets a year. I mean, I was crushing carpet pythons because I was so into them. And we had the, you know, the, some of the first jungle carpet pythons in the country. And then we had, you know, reds, you know, the, 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 the coastals and, yeah, and yeah. You know, all kinds of different stuff. Brettles we were in on the early Love side those, of it. Man. Um, and, and so, uh, but yeah, they're, they're pretty easy. I, th I think they're a very easy snake to breed, to be totally wow. honest with you. And I don't know why I fell out of them. I mean, I still have carpets, but I, I just didn't like when, when, so it was weird. I was like ahead of the curve, right? I was breeding carpets when no one really cared about them. And I remember literally producing like 500 one year and having like 200 yearlings left for sale. Oh, because no one even wanted you know, and it. And I yeah. think, I think I wholesaled to strictly reptiles. I think I wholesaled like a hundred lot of yearling carpet pythons wow. for like 20 bucks a piece. Really? Oh yeah. my goodness. You know, That's crazy. I was just like, I just got to get rid of these. Yeah. I just, just can't, I can't, I, they're getting too big. They're pets now. You know, yeah, yeah. I can't get rid of these. And, and, um, and, and then when, you know, years later when the carpet python thing really started to explode, obviously when albinos came in and so many different morphs came in and, and you had, you know, there's so many great carpet python breeders from Nick Mutton to, to Carrie King, obviously from Slayer to, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. I mean, just, just amazing carpet python guys. Um, I, I just never got back on the, the, the track which was weird because Ben and I was so entrenched with ball pythons. That's at what the I was time, thinking too. Yeah. And ball pythons were really booming. So it was almost like a parallel thing. Like carpet pythons and ball pythons were taking off about the same time. Maybe carpets a little bit later than ball pythons, but you know, uh, there was definitely a very niche market for carpets, like really, really like passionate carpet python people. And, uh, and they were doing, and still are to this day, 
doing amazing things with carpet pythons. I just never got involved with it after that. And, uh, and, and, you know, to some extent I, I regret that, you know, because I, I have always loved them, but there's never been a time I haven't not had a carpet python, at least some carpet pythons in my collection since I was like 17 years old. So, so they're, they're pretty easy to breed. Uh, family bites came back and says, my bad. I like you more, Brian. Speaking of collabs, you and Chandler in Australia, whenever we open back up, I live, I live in the bush. Victoria. Ah, uh, Victoria. I love it down Very there. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Victoria is beautiful. Uh, been to all, all, every state in Australia except for Tasmania. Uh, so Victoria cool. is great. So, you know, I, I love I love them all. They all are very different, right? Yeah. And yes, 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 yes. Me and Chandler will be yes. going to the bush. Um, we've talked about it already, you know, about some trips that we'd like to do together. Uh, obviously, when this fucking virus is, is over, I like that. Um, that, that would be really, good. really, <laughs> with, with some passion. Yeah, yeah. This got, got, fucking oh, virus. Like, you put the, so much uh, on the F, you oh, know? Oh, man, it was just so harsh, man. I just hate, I'm just, I hate I it know. so we bad. Know. But we know it'll be over at some point. Um, and we're going to crush it. And, and then, yeah, we're going to travel. And I know Chandler and myself will uh, will be involved for sure. And Roberta says, call Chandler. Oh, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you know, I <laughs> I should, but I'm not going yeah, to. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. I, we're still early in our friendship. And, and, to uh, be like, hey, you're on the podcast <laughs> live. Don't say anything. You know, yeah, it's a little heavy yeah. on the, to ask. Yeah, but. yeah. I, I, I. I Trust me, Roberta, I thought the same thing in my yeah. head just before, and yeah. I was like, probably not a great idea. We're really close. We're, I'll be honest with you. We're close to, to, to that friendship where I could do that, but um, I don't want to test the waters quite yet. Yes. You know, I want to respect his boundaries a little bit more, and, and uh, if I would have probably... I, you know, it was interesting this afternoon when I was thinking about the podcast and we tested out the phone call and stuff like that. Um, I was thinking about texting Chandler and saying, hey, do you mind? But the truth is, I think the real thing about it was more that I want him on the podcast in person. Yeah. So I, not that it would taint it somehow if he was on for five minutes on the phone. But like I kind of I'm looking forward to that, like in person, like me and him talking face yeah. to face and and really getting into it. And that's going to happen soon. Uh, you know, I talked to him a few days ago and he was like, bro, I want to come up for sure. Yeah, we got to do him it. Up, yeah. So uh, so he'll be up. I think he'd be he'll be up. And, and being a Florida boy, he's going to want to come up before it's cold. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's going to happen before fall for sure. Um, Will says, hey, Brian, did you know that all reptiles are banned in the city of Detroit? Yes. It is a very yep. old law and every yep. animal constitutes a separate charge. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been, it was passed in the 70s. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yes, I'm completely aware of it. And as a matter of fact, I've told this story a bunch of times. That I've, I think it's one of the most interesting stories that, you know, if you work as a Detroit cop, you have to live in the city limits. Yeah. And so my rodent breeder, a guy named Jeff Schrock at the time, um, had reticulated pythons and some other stuff. This is back in the, or, or, you know, late 80s, early 90s. And uh, and he lived in the city, and I used to go there all the time to buy rodents from him, frozen rodents. And, um, and, and his next-door neighbor uh, called on him, uh, and he was a de Detroit de detective cop, you know, and, and he um, uh, had to get rid of his reptiles because his neighbor narked on him. Yep. And, uh, and so then he looked in, in the, the books and said, what's the most obnoxious animal I could own legally, legally in the city of Detroit? And, it, and, and he, he decided to buy <laughs> emus. I love this. And, uh, and, and, and emus at the time were very cheap. So he bought like a handful of emus just to piss his neighbors off, you know, because they make noise, they're running around, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> Giant and then, raptor. Then, yeah. then, yeah, then he started breeding them and then the emu market exploded. A lot of people may not know this in the mid nineties or so emus were going for as much as $40,000 a pair of normal babies. And, uh, and he just was lucky enough to, to piss his neighbor off. He did this. And then now all of a sudden he's got, you know, 50 emus that are producing $40,000 a pair animals. And, and he made millions of dollars, <laughs> so like, literally cool. made millions of dollars, ended up buying out like the majority of the neighborhood. Uh, and then he retired because he was so wealthy. And then he bought a 200, then he even went on the over, light one. Yeah, tell him the light. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you the light one. So <laughs> I remember going to his place and he was like, he was like, you see that house across the street yeah, right there? Yeah, yeah. And, and he said, uh, he goes, yeah, that, he goes, that, 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 that light bulb on their porch used to shine right into my bedroom. He said, so I bought the house just so I could turn the light bulb off. That's the funniest thing. And uh, I don't know if it's true or not. <laughs> Who he gives a lot shit? A lot of puffery there. But but Jeff's a great guy. He's still into to animals. He doesn't do reptiles now, but he does uh, he does emus still. Roos and uh, wallabies. Yeah, roos, wallabies, albino roos, all kinds of different stuff. He's uh, he's a good dude. And uh, myself, Forrest, and, and, and Brian Cusco, and... And Savannah and and, uh, and 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 Miguel all visited him uh, a couple years back, 
and uh, really good guy. But I love that story. So yeah, Detroit. And the one thing about Detroit is there are cities that have bands, but Detroit enforces the bands. So yeah. I used to work when I was a kid. I worked at a pet shop that was a mile away from city limit. And so the the DNR, the Department of Natural Resources, is the one that enforces the laws in, in, in the city of Detroit, used to come in all the time and be like, yeah, we confiscated this red eared slider from this family. I mean, so like when they get a call, they go take your animal, and if they have something illegal, you th- then they charge you for yeah. it. So so yeah, no, it's a, it's a very serious thing. But that law was passed in the 70s, so it's been around forever. Uh, Corey says you should call Cusco or Miguel. Well, you know, I don't know where Cusco is tonight, but Miguel, we can try to call Miguel, but he won't fucking answer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, when you're done with this, do you want to drop some VIP knowledge on these folks or? Uh, what, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. About you know the body. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. body. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, while you're doing that, I'll read this one. Uh, Family Bites came back and says, ha, 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 emus. Uh, we live near an emu, emu farm. Did you hear about the dude that got his foot chewed off by a salty croc on the Adelaide River? No, that's crazy. Whoa. No, that's crazy. I, so we'll see if Miguel. Hang on, we'll see. Let's see what happens here. He never answers. Dude, never. He ain't gonna answer. No, if it's not the second ring, you know. We're trying, man. So this is Miguel from Always Evolving Pythons. If it if it has a thing, I, I won't leave a message. Nah, it's not going to pick up. So I tried, Miguel. He tried for you. Sorry, sorry. guys. Sorry, Miguel. He, he never answers his phone. He, he'll call me back, but he never answers. I mean, I would say out of the 50 times I call him, he might answer one time. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? And that's luck. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's but, all I got right he, now, yeah. bro. So, yeah, so hit so. him with that VIP knowledge, dude. Yeah, so, so we are officially going to launch this week uh, dun, the, dun, dun, dun. the VIP experience for the the uh, the, the podcast. Yeah. So, uh it's, it's, it's say midweek next week if anyone is interested uh that package will be you can have up to six people uh it's going to be four hundred dollars but how, what it includes is that you can come here on saturday at four o'clock come into the reptarium spend like whatever half hour 40 well, however long you want we'll be downstairs at 4 30 4 30 you come downstairs, myself, Jay, yep. if we have a guest, which hopefully we will, because the whole idea of charging the money is to, to help pay for guests to come in. Yeah. Um, so whoever that guest is, you can meet the guest. We hang out for you know 20 minutes, 30 minutes before the podcast. You then hang out in the VIP area with the turtles and the Pac-Man machine, and we'll get some pizza for you, and there's two TVs in there. You can watch... The, the podcast live, you know, chat it up, whatever you want to do, whatever you watch the podcast live. If you chose to go back upstairs and go visit the rep term, you could, the whole thing, you could do whatever you want. Go upstairs, come downstairs, do whatever you want to do. When the Gecko Room is finally done, which uh, we we're supposed to have the Universal Rock next week, by the oh, way. Oh, that's awesome. Finally, you know. finally got it I here. Know. So we can skip back to working on the, rep, uh, the that room. Um, we will then, uh, at the end uh, uh, of the podcast, again, come out there after you've had some pizza and stuff like that. We'll come out there. We'll hang out a little bit, you know, whatever, half hour, yep. chill, chill with the thing. Then you get to go back upstairs and hang out until you want to leave at 9 o'clock, whatever. So so it's like a five-hour event. You know, I mean, you, you get five hours of entertainment for $400 times six people, up to six. You could do it one person if you wanted. You could do it three people. You could do it six people. But that will be available uh, hopefully by midweek next week. And we can start as early as next week if everything goes well. That's so, awesome. So if anyone's interested in that, uh, we'll go. It will be on their reptarian. And hopefully we can get to a point where, like, we know the guest ahead of time so we can almost, like, you know, like say like people want to come and meet yeah. Chandler and we're like, yeah. oh, Chandler's coming next week. Yeah. Get that spot, you know. Oh, my God. It's Elise. Elise. What's the Biro up? Chicks is stopping by to say, keep on rocking it, boys. Yeah, I saw she, you know she was, uh, yeah. she was at, uh, what was the fucking band? What was uh, it, bro? Like Mastodon or no something. No fucking like way. I, I you have no a, idea. Yeah. I love Mastodon, yeah, I think dude. that that's where she was at yesterday. She, Of course, she was doing the show with uh, you know, it's her her show, you know, her, yeah, yeah. her, her pyro. And um, so, yeah, she's rocking, man. I love Elise. She's yeah. great. She's You're fantastic. the best. Yeah, miss she's you. amazing. I do miss her. We want to get Lisa out, too. You know, I know she's busy right now, you know, gearing Getting back Getting back up, into but, life, But yeah. when, when she has uh, got some time, I want to fly her out and, and have her on the podcast because she has some great stories and she knows so many great people and she's just a great person all in all so we miss we miss you too so but um but yeah so like i agree with you 
that yeah. that you know we'll, we'll hopefully have guests in advance ideally what i want to try to do and, and this goes back to what i was saying before with, with you guys is if you know someone that you think might want to come on the podcast no matter how big or small please do me a favor if you have a direct relationship with them like let's say you were like hey i know this guy that has a great crested gecko collection yeah and, and he's a friend of mine he'd love to be on your podcast have them reach out to me because yeah, you guys did great want, with dakota when we had uh, yeah, for, yeah. you know what and, I mean? and like, it was i dropped the ball after dakota because you know dakota came out and it was great and then i just kind of stopped going after it you know yeah, what i mean yeah so so i i want to it'd be great to be six weeks out with booked right you know, exactly with, that exactly. way for six weeks you guys can decide the downside to the vip thing is it's only one per weekend you know what i mean so like when it goes up Whoever buys it, it's done. Yeah, it's first you know? come, first serve. Yeah, it's, I mean, there, there's one slot. That's it. You're no more. And, um, and and like I said, the money is really just for, for us to be able to take that money and help pay travel expenses for the guests, basically, <laughs> is what it comes down to. So, um, so yeah, I th and I think it's going to be a fun experience. And it's like I said, you know, I really struggled with, like, what to charge. And, which we, of course, we put a lot of money into the VIP area and stuff like that. But it, it wasn't about that. I, I just thought to myself, like... I mean, quite frankly, if, if I had the opportunity to, to go see, you know, Theo Vons or, you know, King of the Sting or... And then go to the comedy know, store what, yeah, and hang do, out. You know, like, I mean, I would pay $2,000 for that 100%, evening, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, so, so I think it's, you know, it's... Uh, it's a fair price yeah, that for, for makes sense for everybody. Yeah, for a five-hour event. I like you said, to have out. up to six people, that means you could split it super easy, too. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's not so. that bad. So, But anyways, let me know if you guys are interested. In that. Uh, Maria, we haven't seen you in a minute, so nice to see you. You dropped 50 and said oh you're amazing. Oh, my gosh, Maria, it's been a you while. sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Yeah, it has been a while since we've seen yeah. you. So I hope you're well. I hope things are good, and thank you for your support. Uh, and then... BRH Reptile says, Dibs, I'm in for next Saturday's VIP. I'll drive up from Texas. That's what <laughs> I like awesome. to hear. That's, that's it, man. Let's do it, brother. Man, I appreciate you. And uh, I think it will be a really fun experience. And I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting everybody um, when we do these events and stuff like that every week. And, and I think it's going to be really fun. That being said, uh, back to Daytona, back to, to the stuff. And like I said, hopefully, hopefully everyone prospers. I know Jeremy said that maybe sales were a little bit slower, you know, traffic was a little bit slower, but Sunday, some, sometimes this is the thing that's, interesting. I did a lot of shows guys. I mean, th probably a thousand shows in right, my life, sure. you know? Um, and, 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 you know, sometimes Sunday is the day, you know, sometimes Sunday's the moving day where you make a lot of money. Sometimes Sunday is half of what Saturday is. Yeah. I always, I, I would say eight out of 10 times Saturday is the better day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Usually. Uh, yeah. Now Sunday can be good for wholesale. If you want to wholesale, uh, I don't know how people feel about that now, you know, but, but, uh, you know, Sunday's a good day because there's a lot of people that are walking around that are like trying to buy quantity of stuff and, and you could make a lot of money wholesaling your stuff, but you got to be willing to take 30 or 40 or 50% off what you're asking. And, and I don't know in this current market if that makes a lot of sense. So, so sometimes my Sundays were better than my Saturdays only because I did have enough quantity to wholesale and I would make big, big wholesale sales on Sundays. But as far as customers, typically Saturday was the better day. But every now and then you would have a, a, a rogue show that was an outlier that that Sunday was the better show and you, you crushed it on Sunday. So um, so hopefully tomorrow will be a good day for them. And then uh, I'm, very, I'm very curious to see what's going to happen with Tinley Park. You know, obviously uh, the NARBC did the Schomburg show in, what was it, in June? I think it was I June. I believe you're right, yeah. Yeah, I think it was in June. And uh, it was a little slower than I think most people thought it was going to be, especially being that there was no NARBC. But it wasn't at Tinley. It was at Schomburg, which is a different beast. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming that that Tinley is going to be really strong, uh, I think. Um, and, and a lot does have to do with the virus and where we're at with things and so on like that, right? Because, you know, I, I if, if I was a betting man, which, you know, it's not, I'm not like the smartest guy on the planet, but if you look at a graph of, of the last, you know, 17 months or however long it's been since COVID's been here, um, it's a cycle, yeah. right? It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes yeah. down. I think that we're going to be in a down cycle when we hit, hit, you know, that area, that, yeah. that, you know, in October, we, we should, we're kind of on the, cause up. we're on the up right we're now, on the up now. Which we're going to probably, yeah, yeah. We're, we're probably going to die. <laughs> no, it's well, gonna die. Uh, <laughs> at some point, hopefully we will, uh, yeah. but, but I'm saying we're probably going to die down, yeah, I know die down 
probably in the next, you know, two, three, four weeks, whatever it might be. I think you're going to be on a downtrend. And, it's and like then, then it's usually, usually a couple months of down. And then hopefully by a couple months is down, uh, this isn't doesn't come back. Well, that's the when same you try way. to get all those, you know, everyone on the same page and get everything moving. Yeah, forward, well, you know listen, you know, I, I saw an interesting t- statistic today saying that 94% of people in the UK have antibodies. Either really? naturally or vax, they have eighty percent of their population is vaxxed right now, yeah, and ninety four percent of their population is uh, has, anti- has anti- either natural or art- you know, artificial yeah, yeah. Uh, vaccine antibodies. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when you have ninety four percent of your population. Now they only have six percent that could get sick. You know right, what I mean? right, right. So, uh, so like you would think the numbers would go down pretty quick when you only have six yeah. percent of your population, and that's ultimately what ends up happening when a pandemic turns into an endemic, right? Yeah. And uh, and so hopefully that's what's going to happen with, with COVID is that this will be the last part of the pandemic, the last you know, peak of the pandemic. And then from here, it'll turn more endemic. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what I think most experts believe is going to happen. So my point is, is that I think there's a good chance by time Tinley comes around that it's going to be kind of at that endemic stage and, uh, and, and that we're going to be, um, you know, feeling pretty good about it. And, and hopefully Tinley will be a rocking thing. Well, whether I go or not still up in the air a little bit, but, uh, I might drop him. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens. But, uh, but you know, I, I always want people to do well at the reptile shows. I mean, obviously, you know, it's it's great when people are into it and it's exciting. And if you haven't been to a reptile show, I highly so encourage you, yeah. you go. Um, you know, it's it's a little bit different for me than, you know, number one, when I used to go, it was work, you know, because yeah, I was yeah. doing, I enjoyed meeting people and it was fun. Uh, but also now when I go, it's it's busy too, you know, right? I can't just walk into a reptile show and walk around, walk around and be, and like, stuff, be yeah. like, hey, let's see what's on every table because normally i mean like you know it, it's hard you know i mean, I mean it, getting I mean, into strange. the into the place is going to be a, yeah a and, chaos. And, and it's awesome i love that i'm so appreciative of, oh, of the course. fact but it's just different it's, it's humbling that i you know people care but you know like i remember going over to south africa and i made it halfway down a ra- aisle and, and that's as far as i made it yep. i never made it yeah, because then half, people start coming to you, you know. Yeah, and it just became like I got stuck in one spot for the for the eight hours I was there, <clears throat> and then I had to run around the next morning, <laughs> like before it opened. I had to run around and see the whole show before it opened. Um, but that's you know, so uh, so uh, you know, it, it's it's you know, like I said, I'm not complaining. No, I it's a blessing. It. It's a blessing. You but know, it is but, true but thing. It's, you, it's, know? you know, I I I. I you, know, you will enjoy a reptile show more than I probably will from that standpoint because I enjoy meeting people, but I won't enjoy the reptile show. Right, right. Uh, Family Bites came back to say, we had a pet children's python. I wanted to take it to West Australia, and it wasn't allowed. What mm. is the Stimpsons versus children being reclassified based on? Well, I don't know what it's based on. I mean, it's just based on a taxonomist that that decided to reclassify. Uh, I don't know what the the research behind it and i don't know the uh you know so it's a really typical just interesting thing right because you could look at the taxonomy of 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 an animal and 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 say you know you usually you want like different scale counts right you want uh you know different uh anatomy you know something stuff like that. specifically and, and, different right and i do agree that probably the scale counts on stimsons and children's are probably exactly the same so really the 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 the, the, the two subspecies were based probably on just Phenotype visual, yeah, yeah, phenotypical look, um, which pr- it's interesting, which I is, is something that. I could understand why a taxonomist say you shouldn't base an animal on a locality. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's a locality isn't a it's subspecies. the same species, it's yeah. the same species, just different locality. So I get it, I do get it. I personally would like them to be two different things because I think Stimson's are so interesting compared to children's that I think that they, they, I don't know that I like the fact that they're now being classified as the same species, but our same subspecies. But, um, but that being said, you know, you know, I I don't know why some are lumpers and some are separators and I don't know who gets the right. I don't, I still don't know enough about taxonomy. Like who gets the right to say, I'm going to change. Like how's one person get to do that? Like, I don't know like where that, like if I were to say like, Hey, I want to make three different species subspecies of water monitor because i think that you know these are smaller and these are this and these are that you know sulfurs or this whatever the case is i don't know how i would actually like who i talk to (laughs) like who do i talk to to get that done you know what i mean like to go to like the wildlife minister and say i've got this i don't know (laughs) and if anyone knows please reach out to me because i find it very fascinating and i'm a biology guy but i don't know how you do that i don't know 
I have, I have no idea. clue. <laughs> no clue. But yeah, that's how it goes. Uh, Dr. K says, Brian, please explain why egg cutting. What is the science behind it and how yeah. does it affect the snake hatching? Well, Dr. K, um, science behind it, I don't think there's any science behind it, to be honest with you. I think that, uh, uh, the, I guess if you looked at the science, you could look at it from a number standpoint, right? And, and what I mean by that is that I've been cutting uh, python eggs since I was 18. I'm now 52 talking in just a couple of years. Tens or hundreds of thousands yeah, of eggs. Yeah, yeah hundreds, of, probably hundreds of thousands of eggs. Yeah. And I've never had one die from cutting, you know? So um, Quite the contrary. So, so, yeah, so, and, and you will have, I, as a matter of fact, this has happened more this year because I haven't cut as many clutches this yep. year. So I have had quite a few clutches that literally uh, there's maybe 10 or 12 eggs and there'll be two or three completely fully formed babies dead in the egg when I, yep. cut, when I cut them or when they hatch a lot of, cause, cause I've led a lot of natural hatching this year. I haven't cut as many clutches uh, as I used to just quite frankly, because number one, I've been busy. Number two, you we know, like I go on, yeah, go on a trip. Uh, number three, you know, it, it was used to be very popular in the YouTube channel to cut. Now it's not as popular. So it's, I don't have as much of a demand for it, but, uh, but you, even my curiosity, cause I, I cut eggs way, way before YouTube ever existed. Existed, and I cut eggs even when I didn't care about views of, of YouTube. But uh, now I just there's been a lot of times where I've just been busy and I've, I, I go on my incubator and I'm like, oh my god, there's ten clutches that have hatched. I yeah, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Didn't even realize. Or uh, even today we brought in a clutch that was all pipped, but none of them have. Well, one had hatched. One, yeah, yeah. And uh, but none had you know. So we cut the rest of the eggs even though they were all pipped. But my point is, is that uh, I've had more full born stillborns this year than I probably have ever had because there's been more clutches that I've had. So my point is, is that, and that, I'm not saying that's science. I'm just saying that I know I've had more stillborns that didn't get out of the egg this year. They may have lived if I cut the eggs. Yes. They may not have lived. I don't know. I have no idea. I think there's a but, um, fraction that would have lived for sure. Yeah, there's this. And my point is, is that from my data that I've used over the last 30 something years, I have seen no negative to cutting eggs if you do it responsibly. And what I mean by that is responsibly is, is, you know, at day 56, day 57, 58, if you're cutting at day 43, and I know people that have done this in the past have cut at 42, 43 days. Um, now you're getting into, you might be killing some animals because you're cutting too early. Um, I haven't had that happen. I, I cut responsibly and, and I cut at a time when I think they're about ready to pip anyways. Yeah, there's and, usually, and, and I really don't pip, have yeah. any, I don't have deaths from, from that. So, so I mean, you know, I, I wouldn't say that's scientific. I would just say it's data-based, right? Yeah. And, and it's only data-based on my experience, not on, you know, everyone else's experience. If I took, if we took the data across, you know, thousands and thousands of people, it might show a different, you know, data set. Uh, I can just tell you what my experience is. Right. So why? Uh, because it could potentially help there. Number two, we're excited. We want to see what's inside of it. People like to see us cut eggs because they want to see what's inside of it. And this is exciting. It's you almost know like I mean? unwrapping it's like, gifts. Yeah, it's like unwrapping know? gifts. Yeah. So there's no real huge benefit base to it, but there might be a little bit benefit and uh, and there doesn't seem to be any negative. So why not? Right? So why not? Right? Yeah, yeah, I'm with it. Yeah. Uh, Tiffany says, "Big love big to love. you all from Queensland, Australia." Australia is in the, the house today. You have, yeah, they really are, man. Uh, I love the passion you have for your animals and education. It reminds me of Steve Irwin. Well, listen, you know, Steve what was a, a humble, is a legend, and um, you know, will always be a legend. And and you know, whenever I can even get mentioned in the same sentence as Steve Irwin. Brian gets all awkward. Uh, yeah, now. I love yeah, it. It's, and, and listen, you know, I've told people that, you know, Steve is 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 a once in a, a lifetime uh, guy. Um, he had a charisma about him that uh, cannot be matched. Right. You know, uh, I, I think that the only way we match Steve Irwin is. I take a little piece. Chandler takes a little piece. Dingo takes a little piece. This guy takes a little piece. And in and, and the masses of us, right? You know, so hundreds of us together, uh, we may equal what Steve Irwin did by himself. Yeah. And that's a pretty massive thing to think of, right? You know what I mean? Uh, you know, when, when Steve died, they said he was more recognizable than the president of the United States worldwide. Yeah. Um, he was one of the most recognizable people on the planet. Uh, that's something that happens once in a lifetime, once in a generation. I don't think it'll ever happen again, to be honest with it you. It may never Not happen. Not just for Steve Irwin. Yeah. I yeah. think the way that like 
media and social media yeah. is now, there's just never going to be like the right. Led Zeppelins. There's never going to be yeah. the Steve Irwins. Like you're well, never yeah, going to have yeah, Johnny yeah, Depp's. You know, yeah, yeah, the yeah, Judy Garlands and the and the you know, there's too Sinat- many things. Sinatras yeah, and exactly stuff like that. I mean, yeah, it's just a different world that we have now, and and you can you can you know explode onto the 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 the, the world like Coyote Peterson has. Yeah. Um. But but Coyote and I love Coyote. He's a good friend of mine. I've got his phone number by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we could call. We could call. Coyote. That'll work great. Um, but uh, um, you know, uh, you know, he's still not Steve Irwin. You oh. know what I mean? And I know, I know, he would say he's not Steve yeah. Irwin. Um, you know, but he's reaching a tremendous amount of people as well, and and he's doing a great job. But I think we're all just taking slivers of what Steve did. I agree, and that's all I got, Mister Brian. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, you know, it's uh, it's interesting. Anyone else I can call? Do you mind if I use the restroom real fast? You go use the restroom, and I'm going to look at my phone. All right, I'll be right back and see if I can call anyone else. Let's see. I'm going to see if there's anybody else I can think about calling for you guys. Hmm. You know who I could call? I don't know if he's available, but I'm going to call him anyways. This is my buddy, Matt. I'm going to call him right now, see if he, he answers. So this is Matt Baronic from Sassaback Reptiles. Let's yeah, see if he can answer. I like this cold calling people, but now he's not going to answer either. He always answers me too. He's he's actually I'd say nine out of ten times he answers his phone. This will be the one time that he doesn't. <laughs> All right. All right, I give up. He might call me back, but I'm not going to even take the call if he calls back. But I'll, I might do this a little bit more. We'll do some more call calling in the future as well as uh, uh, I might plan some more calls. I mean, I, obviously, I want to have in person guests but a little bit of calling is just kind of fun just get a couple more things going on and stuff like that but um in kind of wrapping things up for 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 the vlog or the podcast today um yeah let's hope daytona goes well let's hope that these other shows go well and it really you know daytona slash orlando slash everything they, they were that was the foundation of the hobby and i don't know that a lot of people understood that you know that this is where it kind of all began you know and and so this weekend even though i'm not there it's still a special weekend because it's um again it's it's nostalgic and and there wouldn't be a reptile hobby i mean so many things have happened is this way but there wouldn't really be a reptile hobby if um if we didn't have daytona or we didn't have orlando that had done you know so wayne uh, let me tell you a quick wayne story you guys will love this one, uh, and then then we may end this. But uh, so Wayne is 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 an acquired taste, you know what I mean? And, and Wayne and I have always gotten along just fine. But when I was younger, again, I had been from the first expo on. This was probably expo say five, right? Okay. And I would say yeah, like yeah. twenty three years old, something on that lines. I had my daughter was probably three years old. Um, definitely a struggling you know, fledgling business, you know, I mean, I was investing more money, uh, than I was making barely surviving. We had, we had a house, we had a, like I said, a a young child and, and we were really, you know, there were a lot of times we were struggling and, and it was always weird because Wayne would send out table renewals at Christmas for August. And he would give you till like January 3rd to pay. And if you didn't pay by January 3rd, and you wouldn't get the you wouldn't get the renewal. He couldn't pay the year before. You could if you were like, hey, can I just pay for my table? No, nope. nope. When you get the renewal, that's when you pay. And it was always like the twenty second or twenty third of December, just before Christmas. And you only had till right after this, you know January first to pay it. And so like a week, week and a half. And if you didn't pay it, you lost your table. That was the end. And it was always just like such a weird thing to do, right? You know, like why would you make people pay? eight months in advance, number one. And why would you do it at Christmas? You know, the worst time. So I, I had like hardly any money and the, the renewals of the tables was like, you know, $1,500 or Sheesh. something like that. And so literally, you know, like we, we obviously wanted to buy our kid Christmas gifts and all that other stuff. And so I was like, you know, from, from December 25th to like January 1st, I was struggling to come up with the $1,500 for renewal. Right. So I finally get it together and I, I, I send it out like January 2nd, you know, and it's, it's due by like the fourth. Right. And I'm like, I don't know if it's going to get there. This is snail mail. There's no cash app or, or PayPal at the time. This was snail mail. And so I called Wayne up on like the second and I said, Wayne, this is Brian. Um, listen, I just sent out the money 
uh, it, you know, I don't know if it's going to be there by the fourth. And, and he said, well, Brian, you know, if it's not here by the fourth, your tables are probably going to get sold. And I go, well, you know, I'm sorry, Wayne. I just, you know, it's Christmas. And so, and it, it literally, he said, you know what, Brian, your financial problems are between you and Santa Claus. Oh, get he the said, fuck he, out of here, gosh, He said, he goes, if it, the payment isn't here, you don't have tables. Jeez. And so the next two days I was stressing as hell. And ironically what enough, funny on, thing to say, on the though. 5th of December or January, he called me back. And he said, Brian, I just want to tell you, I did get your money today. It was postmarked January 2nd, so I'm going to go ahead and give you your tables. Oh, and, uh, awesome, and, uh, so that, Santa came through for you. That yeah, is Santa the moral of the story. Be the good moral, out there, yeah, fellas. Be good. Yeah, you don't get cold Lady in your fellas. stockings. But, uh, but, you know, Wayne has always been that guy where he's he runs with, a you know, like a, an iron fist. Yeah, you know? yeah, he's, yeah. Like, he's not there to be your friend. You know, like the NARBC is very friendly. Uh, Rami out at the Super Show, very, very friendly. Um, you know, a lot of these other guys, super friendly. Um, Wayne is a good guy and he's a legend. I'd love to one day have him on the podcast because he's, awesome. a, he's, yeah, a, he's yeah, an yeah. amazing guy in a lot of ways. But but he is definitely not the most likable guy all the time. And he uh, he certainly rubbed a lot of people the wrong way at, over the years running the the reptile show. But you know I've always liked him. I've always thought even even though that that one year I I, I hated him a little bit because I was like how dare you you know and 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 uh, but uh, but the truth was is that he was you always knew where you stood with them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yep. He didn't, didn't treat you good to your face and then talk bad about you behind your back. He told you how it was. But uh, I think over the years he he softened a bit. Yeah. You know, I think that when he when he was the top dog, you know, and and everyone wanted to get into you Daytona can just be like that, Orlando. Yeah. You could do whatever you want. When it became like he was no longer the only show in town, I think he realized he had to soften his stance on things and and. Um, and he did, you know, and uh, and, and nevertheless, his, his wealth of knowledge and what he's he's contributed to the hobby uh, is worth his little gruff, you know. Yeah. Of and course. some of the some of my favorite people, quite frankly, in the reptile hobby over the last thirty something years, have been pretty gruff, you know. Some of the guys that have uh, have really been my mentors have yeah. been pretty gruff people, you know. And uh, but but I like that. I don't mind that at all. But uh, that's my little Wayne Hill story. I for love you guys. that. Though. What a good one, though. Yeah, it is. So uh, that's it, right? That's it, man. All right. So we're gonna get out here guys thank you so much for everything you guys are amazing much i appreciate love. all your support on everything uh if you guys uh want to hit up the reptarium.com you come to vip here uh starting maybe as early as next week i appreciate you so uh have a wonderful night guys i love you and i'll see you soon see ya <laughs>